Hi there, good evening. Welcome along to the Modus Super Series where we are celebrating our birthday week, two years of this concept, and it's been a fun week so far, hasn't it, Chris? Yeah, it's not disappointed, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, Group A out of the way, started Group C today and going into Group P tonight. Yeah, Robert Thornton winning Group A earlier in the week, as Chris just said, Group C started earlier today, and Henry Deacon has all the highlights. Kerry Stafford picked up one win from five today, but there was an improvement in terms of the doubles department, nailing four out of four in his success. As for John Nelson, the ADC qualifier, he put in his performance of the week to get the better of Neil Duff, the reigning WDF world champion. It was kind of up against it from all of his opponents. He also was on the back end of 105 from Chaz Barstow. The Duff man sees himself in four on four points. As a far so we did see some brilliance from him. He won three out of five. He's very much in the mix when it comes towards contention for tomorrow night's finals. He finds himself in third. Why is the Sam Kanker? He's in the second automatic position for qualification, picking up that three and two ratio similar to Barstow. But it is Matt Clark, Superman, who leads the way. A five-star performance on the opening day of Group C. He is in a very strong suit to make it to Saturday's finals. Yeah, what is it about Matt Clark here at the Super Series? Really has been a, a great addition, making it through, winning his week, reaching the grand final of the last series as well. And if you look at the Group C table, well, it's looking very, very good for him. Well, he was definitely Superman today, wasn't he? Winning five out of five, just about fell over the line uh, against Sam Kanka in the, in the final game. But I think fatigue played its part. Uh, we've seen some brilliant stuff from all the players today, including... John Nelson, who had his personal best average of the week today in a, in a brilliant display against Neil Duff, one yeah. he won't forget. And one person who will be happy with that last result, Clark beating Kankit, will be Duff. It keeps him just two points off the pace. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, there was a, there was a chance there that uh, he could have reined him in, but that wouldn't have been uh, beneficial to anybody else, really. So, yeah, they're, they're playing for that second spot by the looks of it. Well, let's have a deeper dig into the numbers from this afternoon's session then. Uh, Charles Barstow dominating some of the stats there, despite not being in one of those top two positions. What, what leaps out for you? Well, to, well, apart from the, the 105 from Barstow and the 160, I, I'm just surprised that the average, 83.57, it it's a very strong group, but there was, I suppose, a couple of flat performances in there that brought the overall average down, no more so than in that final game where I think both lads were, were in the 70s in the end. But all in all, I thought it was a very strong group and, and everybody played their part. Yeah, well, that group will resume tomorrow, 9.30 a.m., uh, but we'll have a look at the players that are going to be in action tonight. Some of them you've seen already this week. Lee Cox and Richie Housen dropped in from Group A, which was won by Robert Thornton, of course. Daryl Fitt and David Davis and Johnny Haynes. We've seen them all before here at the Super Series. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was St. David's Day not very long ago, wasn't it? So it's St. Paddy's Day tomorrow. It's our birthday, so it's a bit of a Welsh theme. We've got a Welsh player in the afternoon session and, a, and another Welsh player in this evening session. It's going to be interesting to see how he goes because... It, the last time he was here, he, he, he played all right on the final day, winning four out of five. He picked up ten points in Group A. And as we know from people who have made debut, when they do come back, they tend to perform a little better. Absolutely. And we will uh, take a look at the group betting for this group to see how the bookies are seeing things. Now, we have had the advantage of seeing Lee Cox almost make it through to finals. Now, I, for one, am quite surprised that he's third in that list of five. Yeah, he went very, very close, didn't he? In fact, if Gary Stafford had a beat... Well, he had multiple darts to defeat Robert Thornton in, in the penultimate game yesterday. It would have been Lee Cox who would have won Group A. So, yeah, in, interesting to see him down there at 4-1. to one. That may represent a, a little bit of Valium. Yeah, Lee Cox uh, played really good stuff. Daryl Fitt and David Davis coming in. Richie Housen, he's been up there as one of the favourites, hasn't he, all week? Yeah, he's been one of the favourites not to... Well, he's one of the favourites to win Group A and one of the favourites to, to win the week. And it's no surprise to see him up there at 2-1. to one. Made the... World Seniors Finals, of course, not very long ago. So, yeah, I suppose that's, that's just about right. I won't get your predictions yet, but you have done aces Acker for us, as always. Just talk us through your selections here, Chris. Yeah, Davis against Housen. Um, I think, you know, when you look at how Housen has played all week and the form coming into this week, no surprise there. Uh, I think Haynes tends to get out of the box a little bit quicker than, than the majority of players, as we've seen before, and, and the stats back that up. 
Uh, and again, a handicap bet in there in the, in the final game, minus 1.5, for, so has to win 4-2 or better. Yeah, if you are going to have a flutter only gamble, what you can afford, gamble responsibly, be gambleaware.org for information on safer gambling. But we will now get the action underway in Group B, the first match of the day. Does feature Lee Cox, who narrowly missed out in qualifying for finals night once already this week. He resets, starts again and takes on Johnny Haynes, as described by this man and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris, and a very good evening, everyone, and welcome along to Group B, where we see the man who made it to Champions Week last time out, Johnny Haynes. He returns to the live lounge. He pulls up. He was a victor in Week 11 last time out in this particular process, and he played some really, really good darts to do exactly that. Did the 58-year-old from Swindon, who is playing some of the best darts of his career. We saw him at the WDF World Championships in April last year. He won through a last chance qualifier to be First at the Frimley Green venue up against Sim Lee Cox, a man we've Come seen on. all week here at the Super Series, and he was within a whisker of qualification through Group A, but 36 hours on, he is refreshed, revitalised, he's ready to go again 100. for action in Group B. Paul Hinks is the man in the middle in charge of proceedings and alongside me in the commentary box. Looking forward to all of the action. It should be 10 good games as well. Chris Mason joining us for the ride. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think Lee was fairly philosophical on not winning Group A. Oh, what a start from Johnny Haynes. We've seen this before many many times from him and this is an interesting early matchup wasn't it this may well set the tone for the session you know i think both players are to quite interesting i think it's one of those that if you're going to back them back them early johnny haynes at three to one i think could be a decent shout and lee cox the way that he's played over the First three days, you just feel that the odds 81. given to him, the four to one, was a bit big. Well, I just think it's down to the fact of Housen's current form, the recent appearance in the final of, of the seniors, his form this week. And then, of course, Johnny Haynes, a, a proven winner here, you know, a course and distance winner. So I think they, they sort of put him in that third spot. But Johnny Haynes is... 56. Always Johnny quick out 14. of the blocks, as I said to Murph up there, and he's showing that right here. Tops after 12. Game show the first Could have fitted Johnny a polo Haynes. mint between them three darts. A perfect start for Johnny Haynes. A 15 dart starter. Solid enough return for the man from Swindon, the man from Wiltshire. If you want like to have switched first, over to, to join us, I will keep you up to speed with the Final in the Premier League, which is between you know, Price and Chris Doby. Yeah, it's been a lean couple of weeks for Chris Doby, but good to see him back doing well in that particular competition. But it's going to be a rare week without a Michael Van Gerwen win. Yeah, well, I, I, I was chuffed a bit to see him win week one and then not won a, not won a game since. 140. But that's the way to respond to make the final and he gave MVG a bit of a drubbing didn't he 60 Derby actually 100 got the better of MVG he bageled him that hasn't happened very often to the green machine over the years certainly 85. not in the Premier League Competition is very much made his own over the years. I think he won it on debut ten years ago. That is now. He's won it six times. Good response here from Lee Cox. Down to 101 after 12. Potential of a 15 dart of his own in response. Lee Cox 101. Triple 19. Would have paid the way for double 49. 12, but Jahane's all the way back on 215. So Cox will get a couple of darts at double two. Never this game up at one apiece. Well, he might as well stay there. 139, Liu Carl 52. Game 
Game shot on the second leg. Clinical. And a good, a re good reply. 17 dart hold, one apiece. I think like Johnny to throw first, game on. Played each other down in Southampton. 135. Get the check my notes. If it was, it most definitely would have been in a Group B, wouldn't it? Because that was kind of where Lee Cox was playing back in those days in yeah. that old 100. venue. And due to work commitments, he used to do the Thursday and Friday nights. 60. He does seem to have a good outlook on the game. What are we on 80? A happy dark player is a dangerous dark player. Absolutely. And there's just a different air about Lee Cox this week, a different 60. air of confidence that yeah. maybe at times wasn't there. Yeah, I've noticed that. And even just, even just talking to him, it, He's oozing confidence and, he, uh, and belief. 45. I see it's 45. Cheers, pal. The curse of the commentator strikes once again. Won't be the first or the last. So we've got nine more games to go. <laughs> 45. John Newcar, 150. Uh, six darts and 150 for Johnny Haynes. If you do want to get involved, you can get in touch with us via our social media. 100, Leo Carl, 131. At MSS Darts, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. 91, Johnny Use the hashtag 50. Modus Memories. Indeed. Have, have you done your favorite modus memories have you done your recording yeah that's going to be shown on saturday night be 40. between the Leo group stage and the semi-finals 40. i believe yeah we've all been recording our favorite moments that'll be a player. moment lee cox lee particularly cox. liked because that secures the breaker throw. there we go there's the hashtag on your screen hashtag modus memories no expense spared uh, celebrating our two-year anniversary this week Game of on. course you got any of your favourite memories? Let us know. We might be able to clip it up and play it 100. for you. There has been some amazing moments over the last couple of years. Sixty. I think pretty much on on everyone's list, it was James Richardson's nine against his son in the deciding leg of the match. One hundred. That would definitely be getting played on Saturday night. Josh, you have been warned. So anyone well, that's underrated 40. is Gavin Carlin hit a 170 to send Thibaut Treacle through out of the group stages on the Saturday night. I can't remember who he eliminated from the process, but he sent Treacle through. Carlin already gone through. He actually won that week. But Treacle needed a favour from him. And well, what better favour than a big fish to send you through? 45. Yeah, that's the ultimate way of doing it. One hundred. And not not just the modus memories, the good ones. There's been a few nightmares okay. as well, and I think Leo Carr, Richie House not going for the ball with his last dart in that nine dart shootout will haunt him. 41. Some say, is that look of dread when you walked in the commentary box this morning and you saw I was here? 100. Leo Car 8. Well, this is for a 3 1 lead here for Lee Cox and to really assert his authority over this match. Oh, hello. It's 34 left, isn't it? That'll do. Any way you like, pal. Backs up the break with a hold. Don't recommend going that way, folks.
I was say, I, I think I could safely say with some conviction that first, that probably on. hasn't been seen before here. No, well, the double 17's rarely seen, and we've seen it twice this week. Once on the 154, and just there on the. Well, he was going for a big 16 and just straight in the wide. Would have been a, a leg by that one, wouldn't it? Sixty. Of all the millions of darts players across the world, there cannot be one. There cannot be one that sees double seventeen as their favourite double. And if and if they are, then 100. they must be very bad at tops. Ninety six. One hundred and eighty. That's the second of this encounter. This is a fabulous start. One hundred and eighty. Leo got eighty-one. And that ain't a bad reply. Double thirteen. Sixty-eight. That would have been for full one. Leo got twenty-five. I like the play from Haynes. Game shot Loves of the stick double play. Four. Johnny Haynes. Yeah, that sometimes just hitting that 180 just can be enough to to affect your your, your opponent's concentration, and I, I like that tactic. Six leg lead to throw first. Game on. It is Cox with the darts to seal a 4-2 win to seal the first two points of the group. And what's been a high quality encounter? He's averaging 94.22. Johnny Wonder. Haynes just under the 90 mark. Two 180s apiece. In terms of the doubling, two from six and three from five. Yeah, three one forties apiece. One hundred. But interesting. The scores between a ton and one three nine is ten six. As you can see there. One hundred. So he's just that little bit more reliable. We say it all the time. Sometimes you just need 100. to turn your opponent into submission in this format. You're better off having 11 tons in a game. And sometimes just having that odd 100. maximum here and there. It, it all gets weighted out over the course of a yeah. best of seven. Well, 60, 180, 60. It's the same One as three 40. stuns, isn't it? So... Ball. 95. Johnny O'Carr, okay. 161. So Cox is going to get his chance. 60. In the first Leo two Carr, points of this group, beat 106 is what he wants. Be a big win, this, for Lee Cox. Johnny Haynes was Johnny him in the betting. It's a B for the perpetual 15. I'm going to get the trouble 19 to leave him. Double 12. So Cox Will returns to the 16's corridor to seal the 4 2 success. Tops it is. Game show and top that. seals the Three win top. for the man who came so close to being the conqueror in Group A. Cox gets the first rubber in Group B, getting the better of Johnny Haynes by four legs to two in a high quality affair. Haynes there, 90 average, couple of maximums, 33% on the doubles. But for Lee Cox, two maximums himself, an average of 93.16 and four out of six on the doubles. That is a really, really good opening display for the London County captain. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to see the return of David Davis here at the Super Series. We saw him in Series 2. He's going to return in Series 3 and he takes on Richie Housen after this short break.
Match two is about to get going here in our first night session of the week, and it features the Owl, Richie Housen, who finished third in Group A earlier in the week. He didn't quite recover, perhaps, from a slow start on Monday, but could well find full flight tonight. Looking to clip his wings is Denby darter David Davis, who missed out on making finals night last time he was here by the narrowest of margins. Right, no more tungsten tongue twisters from me. I'll hand you back to Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thanks, Murph. Yeah, you think he was just edged out by on leg difference by three, wasn't it? It was a really tight week, wasn't it? Won four out of five in, in the session in the Group C on the Friday. Just missed out from a place on finals night, but... It was an, an impressive debut, and as I, I mentioned to Murph, more often than not, that the players, once they've made their debut and they get get the experience of, of playing here, do tend to play better on return. It's interesting, because I spoke to David last time he was here. He was here for the full week, and he's one of those players that kind of took group A as the, he was the ADC qualifier last time. He took group A as just an experience. We saw moments in there, but I think maybe a little bit of inconsistency because of the inexperience kind of told. That's why he's plays in Group C. But like David, once he put himself first. into Group C, he kind of relaxed Game a bit more. He was settled onto the stage and he, he kind of played with a bit more freedom. And because of that, we saw some really good stuff from him. And as a consequence, the selectors here at the Super Series were pleased with his efforts. And so he is back here at the live lounge for a second tilt. Yeah, still playing a, a, a lot of ADC events, in fact. Predominantly, he's competing in ADC events. He went to the Isle of Man last weekend, done in the last 16. 32 of the, the main tournament by Aaron Turner. And he's actually, I think he's still one of the belt holders, isn't he, in the, the ADC system? Yeah, he won the Welsh belt. He actually beat Robert Owen in that final. Oh, yes, that's right. The man Give who... Him a Give him a bit of a, a shellacking. Yeah. Average around about 94 in that final over a long course format. It was first to eight, I believe, that final. One hundred. Ready enough start here. I just had a just had a feeling. With Housen having had three days play under his belt, whether 60, David David Davis would possibly come in a little cold. What do you know, pal? You got that? He didn't just beat Robert Owen. He decimated him 8-1. Wow, 98. Robert Owen is some player. Tour card holder now, of course, and a, a five-time winner here at the Super Series. Talking about PDC tour card holders on that same night, it was the first ever undisputed series. 16. Adam Warner won the Terriers title. Whatever happened to him? Tops for a 15 dart hold in leg one and a, a bit 26. of a statement. I'm not quite sure how much Richie Housen will know of David Davis. One hundred and twenty one, David Car forty. Really good pals and teammates with Webby. Game shot on the first leg. David Friend Davis. of the show and also one of our commentators, of course. Second leg Richie to throw first. Game on. He literally lives just up the road from from my missus who lives in Corwin. I have sympathy with his One out drive of here, having done the similar drive, the five-hour trek. And the 55 and the 54 and the M6 100. and the M5. <laughs> not fun, is it? No, that's not a, not a good drive. My son David Davis was here. He participated in week 10. Which was won by Matt Clark, if you like a little bit of symmetry. So a bit of symmetry there. Beat Kevin Payne a 4 0 in that final. In terms of his matches in that 
82. particular week he they got better as the week went on. Aged out a lot four threes, four twos. It was those tight games that kind of well, came to cost him in the, the end. Yeah, on the leg difference. One hundred. It's when you need to drop in a couple of four nils and four ones. One hundred. Retrieve a car one hundred and twenty one. No, one two one for Housen to level this game up at one apiece. That's got the luxury of time though with there he's back on two nineteen. One hundred and twenty five. Richie will call thirty six. No, double eighteen for thirteen data to level us up at one apiece. Game show and there the it is. Way. It's been a Richie high quality Houston. affair thus far. That's a 13 data there for Richie Housen on the back of a good opener from Davis. Well, Housen averaging a ton. Davis 97. And so far tonight, I think the players have really settled into so proceedings. Like first. Game on. And we're seeing some real steady stuff. Real good stuff. Because people mention about the ADC qualifiers and... It's a great avenue for players, but it doesn't have to just be a one-time thing. If you play well and you impress the organisers, they will give you that second chance. They'll give you that second opportunity. I mean, look at the likes of Mike Norton and Kevin Dowling has also been given second invitations to play here at the Super Series this time around. So, yes, you can qualify for it, and you can qualify for it more than once. Jack Vincent's going to be playing in a couple of weeks' time, and he's qualified for it twice. But if you don't qualify for it first time and you play impressively enough here, you all get a second bite at the Super Series Cherry. Yeah, we saw that frequently, didn't we? Down at Rob Robert Rickwood, who, who won an actual tournament when we were down in Southampton before we collaborated with the ADC. And he became a regular fixture. The most famous of which, 45. the man who's hit 2-9 data said, Conor Heenahan won an online qualifier yes. in Ireland to be here. Yeah, that's right. He well, he bad. actually came down to Southampton and played the same week as his brother once, didn't he? Didn't they what both win the same qualifier? Yeah. First 180 of the match goes to Richie Housen. Moment, just found a, another level. 121. Like Gizzy Price, who's about to go. 5 3 up against Chris Doby in the final in Nottingham. What is that now? Week 6, is it? Week 5, week 6. 65. David Ducar, 142. Newcastle next week. I bet Doby can't wait for that. Yeah, that's going to be quite quiet, won't it? <laughs> I'm going to the one in Sheffield in May. 7. Richie Wakar, 96. Lord Rawling is part of the world, isn't it? Sure is, yeah. Steel City. And Richie Housen shows some steel here and break the throw of David Davis. And he's going to get a poke at the 135. This is to hold throw. David Wakar, And he's going to need it with Housen set fair on tops. Oh, button. Needed the 45 to get a go at tops. But Richie Housen. 75. Richie Wakar. In a good 40. spot here. Tops for a break and a 2 1 lead. Tens. Game shot on the third leg. Richie Housen. Very tidy, isn't it? 13 dart hold. Backed up with a 17 dart break. Average of 96.2. Fourth leg, Richie to throw the first. Game on. It was actually the worst leg of the match because the first leg was a 16. Yeah. But it's at this point where you expect Richie Housen to kick on, to really go through the gears, and it's going to be the task of David Davis now to try and keep tabs with this year's World Seniors finalist. Yeah, you think that Richie Housen will just start to turn the screw. 
And in terms of performances this week, if you look at it over a cumulative scale of 15 matches in Group A, he probably was the most consistent performer in terms of 100. averages, but there was that odd occasion, wasn't it, where he kind of ran into it, especially against Robert Thornton. Yeah, he walked into a one of the 202 pluses, didn't he? I think a 98.6 as well. During the course of Group A, Robert Thornton had back-to-back 98.6s and then back-to-back 102s yesterday in his opening two matches. 57. Eighty-one. Seventy-seven points the lead, plus these. I think it would be an unassailable lead. Sixty. Sort of starting to hold that mid-90s average, isn't it? I think this has been the inflation of his game over the last year because that's kind of now where he's setting his base. It's where he's hanging his hat now. 100, Richie Ricard, 144. Yeah, he seemed to be consistently around the 90s mark in Group A. Draw 16 is the shot. 96. Right, 48 upon his return. Davis can only set up on 181. It's going to be the 16th corridor for Housen. 59. Rich Ucar, 48. Despite the block blaster start of David Davis's consistency, has given him the opportunity to open up a two leg buffer. Game and take it, he leg. will. And that is another 17 dart leg. Back to back 17s opens up a 3 1 advantage for the Owl. I suppose it's no surprise that he's Fifth leg, David trying to set first. the pacing group Game B. He is the Owl after all. Yeah, is he a night owl? Nancy Price did complete 45. the win. 6-4 against Chris Doby. Is that his second Premier League win of the campaign? They all merge into one in my view. Did he win week two? It was one of the early ones, wasn't it? Doby obviously won one. Yeah, he won the one in Cardiff, didn't he? Yes, yeah. yeah 140. Home venue. And then, of course, it was three on the spin for MVG. Absolutely delighted with that win. Mutes Abigail Davis's tweets. <laughs> well, if you want to watch a bit of live darts, get yourself down here. 121. It's a special night Saturday celebrating our second birthday this week. Tickets are absolutely free. You get them via dartshop.tv. Doors open at about 6.30. Come and join us for a unique and intimate experience at the darts. Good night out guarantee. Oh, absolutely. And what a lineup potentially we are going to have for that final. We already know. Robert Thornton is there after winning Group A yesterday. He gets the Thursday and Friday off. I mean, just Robert Thornton on his own is enough of a reason to come down. Two-time reigning back-to-back -back World Seniors champ beat this man in the final. And World Match Play champion. Former World Masters. A UK Open champion. A Grand Prix champion. How well, many he didn't win. This is to save the match for David Davids. It's going to be the solitary dart at top to bring it back to 3-2. 64. Richie Ricard, 136. Well, if that was a cricket delivery, that would have been classed as a wide. No dart. Yeah, Paul Hinks would have been tapping the leg. 82. <laughs> David Ricard, 39. There's a save the match. Double ten, not by design. Eighty-two. 
19. So how some returns for the win, a 4-1 success. 54 is what he wants. Tops. Tens. He's been so good here 84. this week, but not on this occasion. And 20. so Davis wants to target. Housen's just missed to bring it back to 3-2. He still have to try and find a break of throw in the next. But he'll be looking to try and take the first step first. Could be a good guide. Well, edging closer, but edging further down the hockey. No score. Richie will call 10. If looks could paint pictures, that would be the exact definition of how David Davis is feeling right now. Housen, double five. Plenty of room to the left. Game shot a perfect Richie marker Hauser. and a perfect start for Richie Housen, who gets the better of David Davies by four legs to one. Doing so with an average just underneath the 90 mark, 50% on the doubles. It is a real good start for the Owl here in the evening session at the Moda Super Series. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we return, it's going to be the debut of Dowell Fitton in this particular week at the Super Series. The Dazzler will be hoping to dazzle us with some stupendous darts as he takes on Johnny Haynes up next.
Welcome back. Thursday night's third fixture features former World Trophy winner, World Masters runner-up and three-time World Championship semi-finalist Daryl Fitton. Last seen at the World Seniors Championship where he reached the quarter-finals. Fitton faces Johnny Haynes who has already played once tonight. He was beaten 4-2 by Lee Cox. So Haynes looking to hit back or will Daryl dazzle? Let's find out in the company of Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, always great to see the legend that is Dal Fitton grace the stage of the live lounge here in Ports of the three times semi finalist at the BDO World Championship. And of course, won his major honour at the Lakeside when he won the BDO World Trophy back in 2016. He's up against Johnny Haynes, who lost out to Lee Cox 4 2 in the opening game of the night. But the signs are very positive for the punk, averaging 90 in the process, had a couple of maximums and two out of six on the doubles and according to the bookmakers he is a very short price favorite at 8 to 13 to get the better of the man from stockport yeah and i think i think the fact that he's already had a game on there and has caused had so much success in the super series before winning a week i think he's going into this one as the the right favorite May take Daryl a, a match or two to get going, but really I've got to get out of the blocks quick. And it's an interesting first conundrum, like isn't it? That we're only first. really getting Group B where Game someone on. would have played and somebody wouldn't have played, and it's in case of will the player coming in court be able to catch up in time with someone who's already graced the stage. But then I suppose you could throw it the other way around. Okay, he played well, but he also lost his opening fixture, Johnny Haynes. Forty-five. Sedate start from both. I think we we saw in that World Seniors that it took him a it took him a set or two to get going, and then 58. he produced a wonderful set, didn't he, against Leonard Gates? And then Leonard managed to find another. Well, he was a revelation, wasn't he? Throughout it, he was. One hundred. Lit the place up all on his own. One of the sports great characters definitely emerging to be, just that Leonard Gates. So much so, we even got the presenter at the Super Series to do a little dance. And no, it wasn't Chris Murphy doing 81. the dance. That was that's something that nobody. <laughs> Wants to see. That would definitely not be a modus memory. No. One out of them, 40. It's 100 arts already here in leg one. Forty-five. Have been reminded by Murphy. Did do some dancing up on the balcony. He did a moonwalk. Oh, he did. One hundred. Viewers, of course, all over the world of our coverage. Good friend of mine, Yogi. He's watching over in Spain, sunny Spain. Seventy-seven. Johnny O'Carr, one hundred and sixteen. Best town I've ever seen. You were as early as well as yesterday, wasn't it? From New Zealand. We do do the social media. Please get in touch if you've got any questions or any of your own favourite memories. Henry will take a look, at our, look at our John Car thirty six Twitter page at MSS Darts. Double eighteen for Haynes. Splits, doesn't he? Mm. Loves double four. Twenty eight. Does that mean it's hashtag time again? I think it is. I want it, I want hashtag time next leg. There you go. Just for you, Henry. 98. Johnny Ricard, 8. 1-0. 2 Game shot on the first leg. Johnny Haynes. 
and gets a break at the earliest opportunity. Here it is. Hashtag Modus Memories at Thank MSS like Darts on first. Facebook, on. Twitter, and Instagram as Haynes takes an early lead by leg to nil. It's a late start to the opening leg, but he kicks off the second with a ton 40. Now, last time Dale Fitton was here, he was of his old sparring partner, Tony O'Shea. Never a boring affair when them two are in a room together, let's put it that way. <laughs> 100. If you are tuning in via the Modus Super Series YouTube channel, there's actually a feature on Daryl and Tony playing Mr. and Mr. Tune into that between the sessions. Yeah, I didn't have a great time of it the last 13. time. He was, it was, was that Series 1, Week 11? Played ser yeah, Series 2, Week 11. Oh, he series. played just out, yeah, in the new year. Yeah, he just struggled in that. 62. It was in a Group C. He was with his mate, Tony O'Shea, but when Mark McGeaney gets dropped down into a Group C, that, that makes life difficult for starters. And you had Adam Lipscomb, who is improving every time he comes here to the Super Series as Johnny Haynes finds mean? his first max of this particular match, and he pushes the average now above the 90 mark. On. For a potential 14 data here. 44. Johnny O'Carr, 51. I'll take your pick. Tops is what he wants. 11. Not to be this time. But fitting all the way back on 235. All he could do is try and make inroads and hope for a miss. From Johnny Haynes, well, he's already missed five at a double in the opening portion of Johnny this match. 40. One left. Green Finds it, doubles his lead Johnny to 2-0. Nil. In terms of the scoring department for Johnny Haynes, it's not too bad at all, but two from nine on the outer ring. So far, but he's being afforded opportunities by Dale Fitton, who is still kind of waiting to get out the traps a little bit. Seventy-eight. One hundred and forty. It pals, of course, with Dennis Smith, Johnny Haynes, played a, lots of opens together, travelled together, played pairs together. Fifty-four. It's one of those players that makes the game look so effortless, doesn't he, Johnny Haynes? One hundred. Yeah, he just... There's nothing complicated about it. Just stands there, throws his darts. And it's such a laissez-faire attitude when it comes to the sport as well. If it goes in, it goes in great. But if not, then I'm not going to beat myself up all no. day about it. It's a game of darts. And that's exactly how he treats it. And that's probably why he's still a very, very good player to this day. 81. Yeah, qualified for Champions Week last time out. And winning that week. The better with Neil Duff, I believe, in that particular final. 44. Remember being on stage, presenting that check to him, me and Corin Hammond, and the smile on his face was beaming from ear to ear. That infectious love for the game is very much still there and always will be there. He's one of those that 
may not go to like all the open events like the Isle of Man or things like that, but he does so well locally and anywhere else he'll go to. He'll always be competitive. He'll always be in with a shout. Yeah, he's always, he's always picking up a, a few opens here, there and everywhere. He still loves to travel and... Ooh. Green shot on the third well, leg. Johnny hate Haynes. Double 16. <laughs> but loves double four. Best leg of the match there. 15 dart break a throw. He's got the double break. Disastrous start well, so Johnny far. Johnny through first. Game on. Darryl Fitton. Well, it's kind of been like a run down the M25 at 4 a.m. on a Thursday morning for Johnny Haynes so far. Smooth sailing mm. when they don't shut it. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's never fun because whenever you want to fly back, you know, you're, you know when the road's clear and you just want to have a nice little run of it and you just see cones and flashing yellow lights everywhere. 16. And then blue lights behind you. <laughs> Better than fitting. 100. 40. Well, by ton. You mentioned earlier on his World Seniors campaign, and he just got better as that went along. You, you kind of expect Dale to maybe 41. play his best start, maybe game three, possibly game four tonight. Well, I think the minimum requirement on the opening night of Group B is to win. Half your games, two from four. Usually, 81. 10 points is enough, isn't it? A lot of the time, eight is good enough to go through, but 10 just seems to put that rubber stamp on proceedings. 81. Because effectively, the only way you can go out on 10 points is if there's a four way tie on 10 points. And the likelihood of that happening is usually because somebody else has just been absolutely gumped. 60. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think we're going to see a session here where someone ends up pointless. 60. Has the potential to be as close as Group A. Well, this is Hail Mary time for Dal Fitton. Oh, man, he's find his way to sneak it in. Yeah, super second dart. Once tops. 80. Johnny O'Connor, 82. Will that be his last dart? <laughs> 14 ball. <laughs> Button. 46. Oh. Dallas O'Connor, 40. Good leave. <laughs> Tops for Darrell for a break of throw. Game shot on the fourth Pins leg. Darrell right Fitton. In the middle. Well, that will make him feel a whole lot better. It's a 16 dart break of throw. One match dart. Up the ball. They think Darrell did throw first. Game Johnny on. Haynes. Now, so many spies got to start somewhere. That may just be the. Ignition of the blue touch paper from the man wearing the blue touch shirt in Dowell Fitton. Fifty-eight. That's for Johnny Haynes, very colour coordinated between his shirt and his flights. Sounding very Paul Nicholson, aren't I? You can tell I've been spending a lot of time in his company over the last few weeks. What are they? Well, sadly, well, there's a first max. Nico's next shift down here is the the middle. Well, nearly the the middle of 100. the five out of six. I'm I'm doing it's. I'm doing two weeks back to back, then getting a week off, and that's when Nico's down, and then he goes, and I'm back down for three weeks. So we miss miss each other again. Trying to keep us apart. Instead, you're stuck with me. 54. 
how things could have been so different. Just think of it as a, an apprenticeship. 100. Always a pleasure, never a chore. You're the, you're the one with the journalism degree, aren't you? You haven't got a degree in journalism, have you? Yeah, I mean, if, if you saw what went into the degree, I mean, you could probably question it on more than one account, but... There were some questionable states I turned up to lectures in, let's put it that way. How long did it take to do? Three years? Three years in the midst of lockdowns and things like that. A lot of remote stuff and Zooms or whatever they called them. Oh, another one of those. Or a corker. Oops. One hundred and eighteen. Well, he's starting to find some great Johnny form Lugar, here. It was a Sixteen data in the last leg. He's left double nineteen after fifteen. I'm amazed he didn't stay. One hundred and thirty-eight. Yeah, Dalvin thirty-eight. Long way down for Big Darrell. Game shot on the fifth oh. leg. Darrell Fitton. Nails it. One eighty in the leg. And back-to-back -back legs, 16 and 16 darts. He's got his average up to nearly 80. Six legs, Johnny did third first. three on the doubles. Two on 40s, 1-1-80. One, 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 warming to the task. Haynes, I feel like he should have got rid of his man when he had the opportunity, and now Fitton is gaining in confidence. He's found something here mid-match. Well, he's had one match start at the ball, hasn't he, Johnny Haynes? To win it. 4-0. 60. And well, he started very well in his opening match, didn't he, against Lee Cox? Won the opening leg in 15 before... Lee reeled off three on the spin. He got one back in 14, and then... 40. Lee uh, got over the line to win 4-2. We're going to see up next against David Davis from Wales. 100. But when will that be? Will it be in a couple of minutes, or will it be in a couple of legs? Means... In front with the foe, but it's only 25% when it Fitton. comes to the outer ring. And the way Fitton's been able to finish off legs when he's had the chances at doubles. Oh, he's just uh, got to not give him a go. That's going to be the the key to success. 87. Well, in a roundabout way, he's left to finish. Not by design, but it's managed to work. 81. He was definitely Johnny not going for a single seven to leave 170. If he takes this out, though, you'll say he did. No, sir. Oh, he has the luxury of time with Fitton back on 201. Not for long. 100. Johnny requires 70. Now to get himself on the board and to get himself back level in terms of this group campaign after that 4 2 defeat to Lee Cox. Wow, he's made a little bit of a mess of this. Yeah, 45 left. Single five. 30. Jalil Lukar, 101. There'd be some way to save it and to send it to a decider where Fitton would have the darts as well. So trouble 19 or trouble 15. What's his fancy? Double 19 was what he went for, was not what he got. And so Haynes back for top for that 4 2 win and to stave off that mini revival from Dowell Fitton. Been having a disaster on the doubles 30. and it continues. Dowell Yokar 48. That's now 3 from 15, just 20% on the doubles, 66%, 2 from 3 for Darrell. Single eight for tops or 16 for double? 16 for double. That's almost like a range finder, that first one. 16. Johnny O'Connor, 10. Was that his last chance? Come and come. Yeah, two for double four. 
Games, Johnny Twos never Johnny lose, Haynes. as the saying goes, and that is so true when it comes to Johnny Haynes, as he gets the better of Daryl Fitton by four legs to two to get his Group B campaign up and running. He lost his first match by that scoreline to Lee Cox, but he recovers of a 4-2 win of his own. 13 missed doubles are in amongst the mixed for the man that they call the punk. Fitton is defeat for him in his opening match of the night. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, we're going to see Lee Cox in action. He takes on David Davies. This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
hope you are enjoying the Arrows action here at the Modus Super Series. But just a reminder, you can come along to any of our finals nights here, including our big birthday bash this Saturday. All you've got to do is go to dartshop.tv and book your tickets. And it won't cost you a penny. Robert Thornton will be there after pipping Lee Cox at the post in Group A earlier in the week. Cox back in action now as he bids to ensure he is part of the party here in Portsmouth on Saturday. And Crafty Cox's victory over Johnny Haynes in match one tonight was his ninth win in his last ten matches. He takes on Welshman David Davis in game four. He lost out to Richie Howson in his opener. Right, let me hand you back to our commentary team. Over to Henry and Mace. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, both these players will be hoping to be a part of the big birthday occasion on Saturday evening. And I'm not a salesman by trade, Chris, but the idea of going and watch world-class darts, complimentary, free of charge, plus we'll be supplying drinks at a very good rate, screams to me a very good night out. Yeah, unfortunately, we're working. Otherwise, I'd be getting involved. There's always pop world after. <laughs> And he's good pals with Mark Webster from the same place, of course, Denby. And uses a Mark Webster dart. Interesting little tie, this one. Lee was very tidy in his opening match, wasn't he? Defeating Johnny Haynes. First leg lead is through first. 93.16, 66% on the doubles, two 180s. For David Davis, he did average 80.82, but it was more competitive in that game against Richie House than what the statistics probably show. Yeah, well, the one from eight on the doubles is ultimately... 58. Well, I mean, that's sort of brought that average down to 80, but ultimately what created the opportunities for Richie to, to win 4-1 because early it was competitive, 39. wasn't it? We won the opening leg and Richie won the next four. Yeah. That was a theme of yesterday, wasn't it? Eighty five. Is this the first time David Davis would have experienced the evening session as well here at the Super Series? And it is a different experience for the players. A you're you're coming on and off the hooky whereas 55. when you play in the six player groups, you actually do sometimes have that little bit of rest time and of course you're adjusting to a, a different time to play as well compared to his previous experiences here, where he would have been getting used to the 9.30 a.m. starts in Group A and Group C. Sixty. Sixty. Fifty-five. Let's say that this is an opening leg, which will hopefully see this game come to the boil as we kids. progress. Yeah. Trouble 12 is usually 92. His, his route there. Daniel Carr, 140. 50. Oh, yes. Double 10. Game yeah, that lights up the blue Daniel touch Daniel. paper. The ignition, the spark for David Davis. Just. Second leg, David, you throw first. Game on. Doubts will be in the back of the mind now. Fifty-nine. Actually, the highest score of the match. <laughs> yeah, it is. Eighty-five.
Yeah, David Davis, last time he was here, came through as an ADC Richie qualifier, a route which is providing more and more popular. It's becoming an international qualification route into the Moda Super Series. The ADC's Oceania Tour is heading towards its way? conclusion as Cox okay. finds himself with a max to his name, the first of this particular encounter. They're heading towards the end of their tour. There's a $16,000 prize fund in Brisbane over the course people. of the weekend. A number of events taking place, which begins at 8 o'clock UK time tomorrow. And the top three players in the rankings following the conclusion of those events One will qualify for a spot in Series 4 of the Moda Super Series, which begins in earnest at the beginning of May. They will arrive team-handed. Nice for them, though. Never had a... For the three that come Game through, they're a bit of leg. prep Cox. and prepare and travel together. Always nice, and that was nice because that was an 11 dart break back. 180, 140, 96 out in two. Third leg leader through first. Game on. One hundred and twenty-five. And we see this a fair bit of the Super Series, where if you have a stink of the opening leg, you usually see one that can manage to wriggle it off, and can it? 41. Can that pattern set in for the other? Well, usually in that scenario, it'd be David Davis, the player who got the 140 check out during that leg that you would have expected to kick on, but as a consequence, it's Lee Cox who has 59. managed to go through the gears. Yeah, in fairness, not too much. Well, he would have had to have gone out in 12 himself, wouldn't he, in that leg? Max 140, 96 out. It's not too bad. 99. Up next, Richie Hausen. We'll face Daryl Fitton. 60. Match number five of the ten we're bringing you this evening. 100. Meacox build on that really impressive second leg. 40. It's feeling like a game that's just a little bit feast or famine at the minute. Very much so. Very much all or nothing. 140. Although that's got him right back in contention for the leg. A bit of a blocker. Sixty. Ooh, stubborn. David Ducar, one hundred and twenty-one. <laughs> Two one then. But yet another break of throw. La ball. La bosh. David Davis. Oh, this is some finishing. He won the opening leg with a one forty out. He's backed that up with a a better leg in terms of numbers because that time it was a fifteen darter, but. Four flag, David, to throw two first. out of two on the doubles. On. The 140, followed by a ball finish on 1 2 1. As we've seen before in our previous stat slides this week, only once has a player won a game four out of four on the doubles with ton plus checkouts. That was Graham Usher in a game against Dan Reed back in July in Southampton in a champion of champion special. That's when we got all the Phase winners from Southampton together in a special weekly lineup before we then moved into the new 12 week format. It was almost a, an au revoir to the previous format, going out with a bit of a bang. 100. I know we're firm candidates of the champion of champions special of the 12 series winners. 100. Forty-one. Twenty-two. I'm not sure there's another word to describe this game at the minute, Chris, other than just a little bit bizarre at times. 
Well, we've had an 11 no, darter with a 96 out. The players are yet to miss a dart a double. And in the leg, as we said, we've had the 140 and the 125, but David Davis is averaging 81.74. It feels like it should be a 101.74. The lowest checkout in the match is 96, but when it's come to the scoring department, well, have you ever seen brilliance or just madness? Well, there's been 13 scores of a ton or more between them. We're only in leg four. 45, Doduka 80. I think they've both been fairly cut adrift in the legs that they've lost. Hence the averages are so low. 60, Leo Car 134. Yeah, basically, he was looking towards the right hand side of that particular bed as Cox goes to 134. It'd keep up the record of big finishing from the players in this match. 58. David so, 20. This is for the first hold of throw that we've seen in this encounter so far. Double 10 for David Davis for a 3 1 lead. David Davis. Well, we've only had one dart miss to the double. But that was our first hold of throw. And it gives David Davis a 3 1 lead and on the verge. Fifth leg leader to the first. Picking up Give a up. very important two points. I tell you who will be sitting up watching this with. A very wry oh, smile yeah. on his face. And that'll be Richie Hauser because he will know that if David Davis can seal victory here, he can already, after two matches, open up a buffer at the top of the table if he can get the better of Dowell Fitton in 95. our next match. Yeah, and he will be the only unbeaten player. Can he make it two from two? One out of them or we could have that scenario where we just have Desmonds across the board. The Desmond Group, which sounds like a 58. 60s cabaret band. Yeah, the completion of the next match. We'll be joining Murph up on the balcony for a quick recap. One out of them, Foxy. That will be, of course, as, as all the players have completed half of their allocated four matches. 60. One hundred. Well, he manages to find a way of squeezing a triple in there with the last dart. One hundred and eighty. Mm. Leo Car seventy-six. That's his first of the match. But is it going to be academic because Lee Cox has the solitary dart at tops? Thirty-six. Right David on the wire, and so David Davis now for the match. Once one away, he's already had two ton plus checkouts in this match. Can he finish it off with a third? Oh, he's not going to stay there for the Shanghai on the 18s, and so Cox is going to get another go at the top of the board. 38. Will you call 40? It's just a hold. Davis has the Game insurance of knowing. Cox. He has the opportunity to serve it out in the next one. A Six like David old game, first. Hasn't it? game on. It's littered with absolute quality. Fifty-nine. Well, our job is to try and make sense of what's happening on the hockey, but there's sometimes Answers on a postcard. <laughs> exactly. There's sometimes games that just completely catch you out and. This is one of those where, as you say, we've seen some brilliant moments from the players, but we've also seen some just downright madness. 44. If anyone can break this down, don't write him because you will take our jobs. One of them, Foxy. Six. Tom 40 for Lee Cox in this game. One of David Davis's 140s 100. in this match was a checkout. 
I'm in the opening leg. Sixty. Only sixty. There was a real opportunity there. Eighty-four. Sixty. Oh, they were literally all over it. Well, he had to have a glance just to see. Yeah, he gave it a second look as if to say, how's one of those not in? Amazingly, if you stare at it, it doesn't <laughs> change where it goes. Despite what we all think. Well, that's what you thought he got in the last visit. 145. David McCart, 156. Lovely, lovely setup from Lee Cox. 145 leaves 36. Ooh, hello. A wry smile from Lee in the background. 138. Ooh. Leo Carr, 36. Seriously scared it. And probably seriously scared Lee Cox. Will have that have any effect? On his attempt at double here. 27. Ooh. David Ducar, 18. And so Davis wants the target that Cox has just missed. Just showed him where it is. He can only bring Ten. it inside, and so nine. Cox is back for the nine. Two fours for free free. Game shot on the six leg. Lee Sneaks Cox. it in the bottom corner. But it is back to back legs. That was a 21 dart breaker throw. And it's now Lee Cox's turn to attempt to serve it out. Leg lead with the honor. First. Game on. <coughs> 100. Channel 2 coming up after this. Richie Housen against Dal Fitton. That'll Complete the halfway mark of the evening. And whilst we've got the opportunity, we'll 16. like to send our best birthday wishes to the Hammer, Andy Hamilton, who's celebrating today and has posted on Twitter, well, it's modus memory, hashtag modus memories. <laughs> and it's a, uh, well, it's a bit of a jig. Yeah, it's a hop, skip and a jive. Yeah, happy birthday, Andy. Hope you've had a good one. 100. I think Charlie Corsfield in the background enjoyed it. Having a good old chuckle away to himself. When's Andy due to be? 100. Back down. It's got to be at some point, hasn't it? Yeah, he played week future. one, didn't he? He lost to John Worsley in the final. Yeah. So, yeah, of course he did. Unless it's a, a second invitation, maybe later on down the line. I'd imagine it'd probably be 60. in the springtime. One or two players do have the opportunity to have a second appearance here at the Super Series. Although they are few and far 105. between as the pool of players that we get the chance to select from continue to improve and continue and to grow. evolve. Yeah, and grow. We have used over 236 24. players so far well, you can't 96. two-year period. Forty-seven. Oh, he, he played that sensibly. Obviously, if David would have been on a, a finish, he may have gone the double double. One hundred and forty. Leo Carl. Never going to be on a finish now. David Davis as Cox returns to forty-nine for the match. Tops is what he wants, Game and tops is what he gets off. to make it two wins from two to open up his campaign in Group B, getting the better. Of David Davis in the last leg decided by four legs of three. David Davis will feel as if he's had the opportunities come and go in that match. Two ton plus checkouts for him. 80 average. Lee Cox 82.41. A game which would left the heads to scratch at times, it has to be said. But Cox getting through as a 4 3 victor. Next up, Francis Housen up against Fitton.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. I'm just going to run you through a recap of the results so far tonight. Lee Cox won the opener 4 2 over Johnny Haynes, and Richie Housen beat David Davis 4 1. Haynes then got the better of Daryl Fitton 4 2 before that comeback win for Cox before the break 3 1 behind against David Davis before picking up the points. So, game five brings us to the halfway point of tonight's play, and it is a meeting between Daryl Fitton and the world's seniors finalist, Richie Houston, and it will be described by Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thanks, Murph. Yeah, good performance in the end there for Lee. Well, a good, good gr ground out win, wasn't it? And here's a stat for you, Murph, that you may not know. Lee Cox has won now 10 of his last 11 matches. His last defeat was against Thornton, which ultimately cost him winning Group A. I like to share those kind of stats around. Just so. Sharing is caring, as they say. That's a Richie Housen here. We saw him get the better of David Davis 4 1. Average just underneath 90, 50% on the Delves. A real solid display. Dolphin got better as the game went on against Johnny Haynes, but even he'll admit that there's going to have to be an incline of performance if he is to well, claim he just, the points he against the out. Well, too much to do, didn't he? But yeah, well, like we, we know what we're going to get from Richie House, and it's going to be pretty Game solid off. from from start to finish. One on the Perfect day. start for Richie Housen. Well, he was the very backable four to nine favourite for this one. I say there were signs that Daryl was just getting his his eye in in that match. So he went three 0 down and produced back to back sixteen dart legs, including a one eighty. 100. Well, Richie House, they're not able to get the nine there, but I have heard the pool star, our very own pool star, one of our 11 referees, Mr. Tungsten Time himself, apparently got a nine 42. earlier. Yeah, our director this evening behind the bar with pool star. It was 3 0 1, though, pal. I was going to say, yeah, we. we I was wondering how long we were going to, like, butter Still him up. Still under average. Yeah. 140. I won't be giving him a start next door when we have a game. <laughs> Seriously strong. Opening gambit here. 180, 140, 81, 81 after 9. A possible 11. We've already seen 11 tonight from Lee Cox. He took out 96 for his 11, so... He won't be going 16 ball. He wanted to go ball 16. 49. But by hook or by crook, he finds his way to his favourite double 16. And he, he seems to be a, a tops man, doesn't he? When he hits tops with great regularity. 100. Richie Wilcar, 32. Uh, for 13 dart to start. I suppose when you're playing this well, they're all the same size. Game shot on the first leg. Richie Houghton. Well, it was a 15 in the end, but it was solid from start to finish. I'll say it again. It's Rich Houghton. First game on. I'm not going to say that at one o'clock in the morning, otherwise I could go badly wrong. Oh, doesn't quite penetrate. All it has to do is touch for it to count. But it didn't penetrate the ball, did the point with the last dart. Yeah, we've seen one of those today, didn't we? 60. Line here. One hundred and forty. 
At least that one stuck in, Daryl. 120, followed by 140. One hundred. You can almost tell with Daryl's throw when he fancies it. There's 100. Just, just a little bit more aggressive when he really fancies it. When he's when he's not quite warmed up, you can almost see it's a bit of guesswork in there. Not lobbed out there, but for a very big guy, he's got quite a a gentle throw. 140. Got of the car, 141. Well, it's a bit of a happy accident, that. 42. Well, it would have been. Well, I'll be hoping to put a flake in it in his next turn. Lowest three dart finish, of course. One hundred and forty. That'll look on ninety-nine. Well, perhaps be ironic on our birthday week if Del Fitton can find ninety-nine red balloons. Tots tops, tots tops. Seventy-nine. Richie Car sixty-one. It was a Nina track, wasn't it, back in nineteen eighty-three? Correct. Nina. A German a girl who had incredible hairy armpits. Well, the song was actually, it was during the Cold War when things were escalating during the 1980s. And it was, a, it was a track made for, well, uniformity between East and West Germany. There's a brilliant documentary. Um, it's the Deutschland series of drama type Series. Chris Mason gives me a look in the comedy world as to what on earth I'm on about. But it's, it's an interesting drama good series. Knowledge. Good uh, knowledge. In German. But it's, yeah, it's a very good, it's a very so good series. So did you sit and watch it with subtitles all the way through? Yeah. 40. Did you not learn German at school? I'm a little bit disappointed you don't. Nine. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> I did Spanish at GCSE, but I dropped out after six months, mainly because you had to you, when you did those sorts of exams, right? You had to you had to like say a load of spiel in there, and I got it completely wrong. And instead of basically saying, <laughs> basically, instead, I can't believe I'm saying this live on TV. It's Delphine goes for a one forty, but instead of saying I own domestic animals, I ended up saying in my exam. I like to eat domestic animals. <laughs> well, each to their own. 45. I, I prefer to smooth them and pet them, personally. <laughs> 100. Well, that's going in the modus memories for three years anniversary. Absolutely. I did actually try to learn Spanish, but I lasted a couple of weeks. 100. Dos cerveza, por favor. Oh, in pretty much every language, I know how to order a beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing you learn, especially when you're traveling the world. Oh, we do, we do that pointy way? thing, don't Take, we? Which you require 125. Trouble 20 and tops. Daryl gave that look of absolute 65. disdain. Look at 41. <laughs> As if to say, you dare. Double 16. Break a throw opportunity, this. Game shot Beautiful. on the third leg. Daryl Fitton. 15 dart, break a throw, 180 in the leg. Averaging over 93 here, Daryl Fitton. Eight Both scores of a ton or more. Game on. 
identical to that of Richie Housen, who's averaging 96. Well, he's 17 points better off at this present moment in time than he was in his previous match. Average 76, 79 against Johnny Haynes. Currently averaging 93, 67 is the Dazzler. But still 2 on down against the ultra consistent Richie Housen. Good scoring game so far. Forty-one. Could have done without that after getting the break. And he's offering up an opportunity to house and to straight back. And if there's one player you do not need to give chances, you don't need to give out presents to, it is Richie House and he'll do the he'll do the job anyway. Don't give any head starts. But this is a much more positive performance from the Dazzler than what we saw in game one. 99. Well, I suppose the issue is in this format in Group B, it's the most cutthroat of the group stage format. So, okay, there's more opportunities to get through, but you're only playing eight matches, so a slow start can really 16. be capitalised upon as we head towards the latter ends of the group. Yeah, I mean, you're never really out of Group B. But you want to pick up at least, like I say, you want you want a sort of a fifty percent strike rate on night one. One hundred. And we have seen players turn it around, but it, it rarely happens. And I suppose the issue is you don't want to then go into the last two games feeling you need to win them because it just adds an extra layer of expectation. One hundred. Dalla Lucar, 161. 93. Richie Lucar, 156. And Peyton is going to return for the 68 foot level game here. 82. Should get a dart double. double. 68. Looking at double 20 for double four. Oh, perfect. For a level game. Game shot on the fourth leg. Super double stuff. Fitting. Super finishing from Fitton. I mean, they're both on 50%, two from four. And he's got opportunities, Fitton. He is by and large taking them. If you look at his night so far, he's four for nine when it comes to the outer ring. And he just poses the question now of Richie Housen on throw. Big last start there to find a treble to start. Treble has visited that he would have opened the corridor of opportunity for Dowell Fitton. Forty-three needs to eradicate that on, on visit. You can see him just throwing his arm out there in frustration. And he has just been a bit more assertive in this match. Fifty-five. Don't forget, you can get in touch with us via social media with the hashtag modus memories at MSS Darts, the 100. place to be. As you can see on the bottom of your screen there, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we're getting very social here at the Super Series. You can see plenty of brilliant content from our fantastic social media team. Yeah, plenty of 60. <clears throat> bonus content. As well. I watched your interview with Paul Nicholson. That's, of course, on our Modus Super Series YouTube channel. If you're not watching there currently when our coverage ends make sure you head over and subscribe and hit that notification bell give us a little thumbs up we appreciate the support but yeah loads of other shoulder type content on there isn't there and there's going to be plenty more to come there's some really really 
exciting content ideas on the horizon here at the Super Series. For your entertainment, 50 weeks in 2023. That's a lot of darts. Yeah, I think we're going to be trying to do a, a, a monthly roundup of 40. everything darts, whether it be ADC, the Super Series, PDC, WDF, etc., Women's Series. Absolutely inclusive. Myself, Nico, and Murph. And I think you're going to be hosting. 140. Going to talk tungsten. Bit of a darts after dark type series. <laughs> what we need. That worries me if I'm hosting. 100. Richie Car 114. A couple of beers. A couple of cigars, maybe. Very behind the bar with Paul Star, like. Not Long John Silver, man. He's from Bristol. 74. <laughs> Double the car, 147. 137 for fit, and this would be for the break of throw and a 3 2 lead. Ooh. Yes. Double 10. Game shot on the fifth leg. Well, Double that fitting. one is for the highlights reel for Daryl Fitton. You mentioned the finishing. Well, that was one right out of the top draw. A one Six three right seven out, a breaker throw, and a three two lead. And the reward for that is he's now throwing for the match. Dazzling from the Dazzler. And if ha if Fitton can find a win here against Housen, all of what our players think? will be tied on two points. With the exception of table topping Lee Cox, who's on four. So we'll have one on four. And four on two. Sounds a bit like a double 100. set up, doesn't it? <laughs> Mike Bassett, England manager. Did you see that? Oh, you showed me it. The Arsenal. Oh. The goal from. Who did Arsenal play? They played Sporting Lisbon of Portugal. What a goal that was. Oh, oh wow. David Beckham esque, wasn't it? No wonder Kim Kardashian decided to turn up. Do you reckon we could invite her down on Saturday night? People like her would go to the. Opening of an envelope, wouldn't they? <laughs> there was a bit of dough involved. Well, there's a pizza shop next door. 100. Oh, not that dough. Okay, okay. Big sigh from the production suite. 85. Piece of toast. Don't you start! <laughs> 60. Well, Daryl here needs a two trouble visit. Well, he's going to find himself going to a decider, 44. and it'll be Richie who will have the darts, the all important darts in a decider. Lost his way in this leg after a fabulous run of legs. He was 2-0 down. Back-to-back -back 15s for Richie. And then a 15, 17 and 18. Including a 118 leg 3 and a 15 darter. A 68 checkout. And that wonderful 137. That's not bad, though. Richie McCarr, number 2. The big D. And this B, a big finish to send us a distance. The 101. He is going to get a dart at double 16. 69. But old dependable isn't old reliable on this particular occasion. And so Dal Fitz and returns for 93 to set a 4 2 success to get himself on the board. 14s. And so how that Richard is opportunity. You sense he's not going to get many against this man. And Housen returning for the double 16 with Dart 16. 
Game show eight. We'll see us go to next seven. Richie House was there a case there that maybe Daryl should have gone for the ball, considering it was for the match and and Richie on thirty two. Now, I suppose we've got this interesting dynamic game. now where we've got a man in Richie Housen who is so used to winning, whether it be an open series competition, whether it be on the big stage of the world scene. He's up against Del Fit and a man who, his previous experience here, so I'm eliminated in the, in the pool Wale! stages. He did get a win at the world scene. He is against John Park. But Richie House has got this experience of getting over the winning line consistently and sometimes that can make a huge psychological difference when Thank it comes to moments like this yeah and those big big legs it's all about the mentality <clears throat> he did come through a real grueler against five. john park didn't he in that world seniors daryl fitton Have to come through a grueler here. It needs to start with finding two One trouble hundred. visits. Was that the game when John Parr had that 129 checkout? Or, or didn't. Best counter in the business. No score. Yeah, that was hilarious, wasn't it? And he, almost, he almost convinced. Who was, who was referee? Was it Charlie? Yeah, he almost convinced Charlie it was in, and yeah, they got there in the end. And what did he go? 25 54 ball. 58. Richie Wakar, 170. One of those funny moments which you can look back on in glee. Well, Richie Housen, feel gleeful. Didn't have to go for the boards so if he found the second treble. So it's all about the setup from here. 82. Well, again, he needs to fill it. Minimum requirement of 140. And that's awkward. Well, Fitton was flirting with a win against Housen, but it looks as if it's going to be the Owl. who looks set to get over the line. Six starts from 88 to seal a 4 free success. Doesn't even have to go 18 ball if he doesn't want to. So he'll stay up on the 20 to try and tee up double four. And so 32 after 15 for the match. 32 is his, his MO tonight, isn't it? A lot of the matches in Group A. One under the <clears> he was leaving tops. Is that just a consolation? It's great pressure. They know how reliable this man is on the doubles. Was that a dead cat? Game because the owl out. gets over the line. Richie Housen. Richie Housen moves on to four points at the top of Group B. He goes above Lee Cox on leg difference. Every player now having played two matches so far in this group. Richie Housen, an 89.28 average. There was five maximums all told in that match. And that fantastic 137, excuse me, from Dowell Fitton there. <laughs> Excuse me, it's a four free success to Richie Housen against Delphi. And that's going in the blue peril, isn't it, for the weekend? Chris Mason's going to make his way up to the balcony to join Chris Murphy to assess all of the action. We're coming up next. It's Johnny Haynes against David Davis. I'm off for a cough suite.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. It's that time to talk to Chris Mason, who's been commentating on the first five matches of the evening. And our first look at the league table, Chris, uh, we'll show you that perhaps two players in danger of being cut adrift. Yeah, and, and the two at the top, we're not shocked by because they both played very, very well in Group A and came very close, both of them, to, to actually winning Group A. So, so no, no shock there, but yeah, the, the bottom two, I always say minimum requirement on night one, you've got to win two of your four games to, to keep you in the mix. We know around eight points is, is possibly somewhere around the number that will, that will put you in the top three and through to, to Saturday night's final. Yeah, perhaps if you don't get that, you're starting to hope that Housen and Cox do just run away and three battle it out for one place. Yeah, exactly that, and I think that, that may well be the case here. I mean, up next... Um, it is Johnny Haynes back in action against David Davis, and it's almost a, a must-win game for both, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to turn our attention away from the five in the field this evening as we've been celebrating the second birthday of the Modus Super Series during the course of this week. We're now going to reflect on what I think is a quite incredible stat, the amount of former world champions that have played in this event. Take a look at that. 17 world champions have competed at the Modus Super Series, and some kind of forgot had played. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when you when you when you look down there and you think of, well, look at all the, the former ladies world champions we've had here, and of course Josh Richardson, uh, a JDC World Youth Champion, Aaron Monk, a, a PDC World Youth Champion, and then the rest of them, of course, all back in the. Uh, the, the days of the old BDO and, and Robert Thornton, the newly crowned World Seniors champion. So 17. But yeah, Mark Webster in there as well, Christian Kiss, Les Wallace, of course, Wayne Warren, and Martin Adams, which has almost been one of the, the regulars from the beginning, hasn't he? Yeah, all got their own stories. Robert Thornton and Neil Duff actually both here this week as well, both reigning world champions that are playing in this yeah. tournament. Duff will be back in action tomorrow trying to join Robert Thornton at finals night. We are going to put that out along with other all-time stats on social media at MSS Dart. So do have a look and give us your thoughts and comments on anything you've seen. And anything you want to know as well, we'll uh, get our researchers to work. But getting back to work here, Johnny Haynes and, and David Davis, as you said, a must-win match maybe for, for both, but certainly for Davis. He absolutely has to get off the mark and, and get some kind of just, just some kind of feel like he, he's in the event. When, when you get sort of cast adrift, you, you, you then, then hit that panic button and you probably end up trying a little bit too hard. But there's been some good moments from tonight. You're counting yourself a bit unfortunate to lose to Lee Cox a little bit yeah, earlier. Yeah, 3-1 up. Yeah, 3-1 up. Look comfortable. Was finishing outstanding. A 140 and a 1-2-1 finish. So he's got plenty to be posit positive about and he's got to take that through to this one. Right, let's get the action back underway. Davis against Haynes in the company of Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, Johnny Haynes back in action. Look at the smile on his face. He loves this game, doesn't he? He takes on David Davis, who is also enjoying the Super Series experience, but maybe not so much the results so far this evening. A 4-1 defeat to Richie Housen to kick off his night before then being defeated in a last leg decide against Lee Cox, who, well, he would have felt he had the opportunity to go on and win that game. He led 3-1. He played well in that one. His AT average has been around his mean for the evening thus far. As for Johnny Haynes so far this evening, well, it's two contrasting performances, but his better performance was the one that actually lost him the match. He averaged 90, two out of six on the doubles in a 4-2 defeat to Lee Cox. He then beat Daryl Fitton with an average eight and a half points lower and missing 13 darts at a double. Well, it is a funny old game sometimes, isn't it? And in uh, Johnny Haynes' case, it has been most certainly that. So it's him against Davis. It's match six of our evening. And as we've passed midnight, we can officially say good morning, darts fans. Well, depends where they're watching around the world, doesn't it? First leg, Johnny did through first. Calm down, Henry. <laughs> game on. University. God. But yes, good good morning for our UK 60. darts fans. Anywhere else in Europe, it could be a, even earlier in the morning, wouldn't it? Be well, one o'clock Central European time. How about in Australia, five. East Coast, West Coast? It will be 9:03 a.m. I haven't looked at it. Google it. I think it's 9:03 a.m. 
903 or 1003, one or the t'other. Actually, 11.04. They're 11 hours in front in Melbourne. So it will still be Good Morning Darts fans. 140. Your prime time out in the States. Wherever you're tuning in from around the world, do get in touch with us at MSS Darts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to tag your posts with the hashtag Modus Memories. Yeah, I'm always fascinated at how far afield we, we get people watching. I say the New Zealand was the one very popular. I suppose with the time difference, it works out all right, doesn't 60. it? 60. Johnny Lucar, 90. Probably have the best time zone out of anyone for this particular competition. 96 for Johnny Haynes for a 1 0 lead. That's a nice little marker for the treble. He's not the sort of player you'll see go double-double for those types of finishes, especially with Davis not on a finish on 2.40. Of course, when we do our Saturday night, that'll be midday-ish and into the afternoon in America, so that fits in perfect. 57. A couple Johnny of American players due to participate. I'm just going to leave it there. Game show on the first line. You're not going to elaborate. I'm just going to just plant the seed. And see what grows from that tree. Any any Canadians coming? Second leg, David, you throw first. Game on. I shall not possibly comment. Fascinating how you know all this information and I don't. 137. Well, another regular here. Niall Cullerton, he's off to the off to Hildesheim, isn't he, this weekend for the Challenge Tour events. One out of them, four. Disastrous start for him. He's turned up. No baggage, so no darts, no clothes. Absolute nightmare. 177. One out of them. That's how you answer a 177 as you pop in a max. Well, score and visit so far in this leg. 137, 140, 177, max. 93. Johnny Haynes currently have an average of 111.95. Admittedly, we are still in the second leg of this encounter. But the way things are going, that is only going to rise even more. 170. Too good, Johnny. David Ducar, 94. Johnny B, too good. May not even get a go, and he's left 11 after 9 because Davies here is looking for an 11. 54. Johnny Ducar, 11. Well, could have had an 11. Johnny Haynes wants 11. And you know what that leaves? His favourite double four. Ooh. Game shot on the second Equally leg. Equally good. Johnny Haynes. Down there, and that was a 12-dart breaker throw. That will be a hard pill to swallow for David Davis. Third leg, Johnny. Did 28 first. darts of the Game first on. two legs. It's on average 107.36. I think with Johnny, he's one of those players. I think if he, if he gets put in that kind of time slot where he has game on, couple off, game on, couple off, I think that's kind of where he finds his best stuff. Yeah. 42. Chance for Johnny Haynes to pull clear in this third leg. Stunning. Well, in terms of scoring, that's his second 180. And he had a 170, didn't he, in the previous leg to leave 11. 
He was, of course. Trying 44. To hit the 25 to leave 36. Averaging at 111.65 here, and we're approaching the end of leg three. 94. 32 after 12. Wowzers. David Davis has just ran into one here. What is that? He finds his Three. first max Johnny of the match, but it two. most likely will be academic the way Johnny Haynes is playing at this particular moment in time, because that's not a bad guide. No score. David Ducar, one You're more surprised that he missed. Yeah. Well, he produced two ton plus finishes of the highest quality in his previous game. Can he add to that tally? 94. Just under. Johnny O'Carr, 32. I'll be a bit more aggressive with this one. Two eights. 24. And from a David position of authority in this leg. David Davis is back for double ten. Game shot on the third leg. Fix his pocket. Davis. With a 16 dart break back. How many darts of the double did he have there, Johnny Haynes? What was it? Oh, it was six darts. Six, Four for David six darts for three nil. Yeah, the treble 18 left himself, double 16, and then missed four at that. So five at that double before then going inside on the double eight. 140. That's for David Davis. That's giving him a lifeline, hasn't it? Well, it was at 180 when the scores of 32 in Haynes' favour and 294 in Davis' favour that gave him the initial opportunity. Haynes then proceeded to miss free at double. He then set up well from the 114 to leave the double 10. Sometimes it could just be small moments like that, especially in this short race format. At his best of seven, that can change proceedings. The averages as he approached the midway point of this match are very impressive. 96.73. For Johnny Haynes, that's actually come down Thank quite you, a considerable Four, margin. 14 points with six missed stars for the double. Well, as credit for David Davis is the fact that he's kind of bought that average up probably about nine points from where he was previously. And so, 45. as we usually see in these types of encounters, the two players at the midway point just kind of meet in the middle. And that's usually good reading for the player who inclines Excellent. his average. And it is Davies with the darts who looks set fair to be the first to a finish. Sixty. Just a sixty opens up the door a little bit here for the man they call the punk. Just have to think about it. 101. Well, that'll do. David Ducar, 156. Some way of leaving the fish. May not get a go at the fish. He scared the 156 a little 81. bit earlier on this evening, Johnny did Ducar, David Davis. Johnny Haynes. Find the big fish. He's had it in the scoring phase. Not going to get it in the finishing phase in this leg. Well, 28. Not even going to put David a dent Ducar, in it. 75. And so opportunity knocks for David Davis, but wow, that's a low first start. So 73 left. Wow. For a third time this week. Double 17. This is incredible. Game oh, well, that's Game a unique way of taking out the 75. Well, the letter spotted double 17. Well, it's coming into the rear view mirror a little bit this week. I presume that was a miscount. Johnny first, game on. Did he initially think he needed 63? He must have. I mean... Yeah, and there's any reason he would go for... 140. Unless out of the millions and millions and millions and millions of dark players we've ever seen in the world, we've finally found someone who likes double 17. 39, 34 on 74. 73's a, a new one on me. No doubt you'll be using that sometime soon. <laughs> yeah, it must have been a it must have been a miscount thinking that the thirteen would have left ball. Eighty-five. 
He wanted 73, not 63. All immaterial. It's 2-2. Two, two. Correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't actually see him actually go to Paul Hinks and ask for a score there, did he? So he obviously must have computed in his mind after he hit it. He thought, oh, no, what have I done here? 100. Until the double 17 sailed in. No, oh, it's it just done by design. Sixty-three. Well, this is some leg in response again from Johnny Haynes. One hundred and thirty-six. So much quality in his game, isn't it? I mean, despite all those missed starts at doubles, he's still averaging ninety-five, ten points higher than ninety-eight. Johnny Gar forty. He's got the luxury of time. Game Doesn't need time. Leg. Johnny Haynes. And he's 3-2. And the leg away, averaging 94.2. Well, his, his winning legs in this match so far, Johnny Haynes, 16, 12, and 14. Six leg 16 and 18 for David. Him. 48. One hundred and forty. He's scoring like a dream. That's his fifth one forty of the match. One forty plus for, of course, he had the one seventy setup shot. One hundred and twenty five. Sixty. Eighty-two. Another two trouble visit here, just to give himself 60. an out. Has to settle for sixty. A good visit here for David, and he's gonna take it to the wire for the second consecutive game. One hundred and forty. One hundred. David Ricard, no, 106 for David Davis to send us the distance. Once again, it'd be the third consecutive match that would have gone to a seventh and deciding leg. 43. Johnny Ricard, 141. Yeah, head in his hand moment there. Still left himself a bit to do. Can he wrap it up with a 1-4-1? You better Game believe he can. The match, Johnny Haynes. What a super end to the match for Johnny Haynes. A 14 darter in leg five and then a 15 dart break with a 1-4-1 one, one checkout. Cheers. Our highest checkout of the night. Trumps his opponents. 140 from earlier on. Well, there's the numbers. 95.2, two one eighties, is a 170 in there. Six 140s, four out of 12 on the doubles. Johnny Haynes joins Lee Cox and Richie Housen on four points. And those two face each other next.
It's a top of the table tie up next in Group B at the Moda Super Series. And Mace mentioned earlier that Lee Cox had won 10 of his last 11 matches this week. Well, having also won his first two fixtures tonight, Richie House and himself has now won five of his last six. The only defeat of that spell coming against, you guessed it, Lee Cox. So whose form will continue to thrive? The winner of this one will put themselves clear as the leader of the pack and will be holding all the aces in Group, a, group B. Sorry, And we have the ace on hand to talk you through it in Macy Ace, Chris Mason, and I guess that makes Henry Deacon, well, the joker, I suppose. It could have ended up much worse than that. I'll take that. Yeah, I think that was fairly mild. And it is gone midnight. Did want to keep it PG? Yeah, should have got stuck right in, dear. I'm sure. Oh, how, did the, uh, how did the football match that you commentated on last night go? Real Who was it? Real Madrid Liverpool. Real Madrid 1 1 0, carrying Benzema uh, 10 minutes to go. Was it good comms that you did? Was it, were you happy with it? Yeah, just me showing absolute rubbish as per usual. You're not disagreeing? <laughs> nope. I've been working with you for a, a year, Henry. Well, they go 11 to 10, Lee Cox. They've made House on the 4 to 6 favourite for this one. Where would your 50 pence be going, H? Very much in yeah. my pocket. <laughs> with your splinters absolutely so much so that we're actually going to go between sessions tomorrow go and buy a brand new fence because this one well you've wore it out basically it's like i'm like humpty dumpty now and i suppose that's quite apt because i do often get left with egg on my face so that's a, you almost did a funny one there 100 i'm impressed Trading tons to start this one. Yeah, these uh, one hundred. These two having their is it their fourth meeting of the week. Sixty. Do you know what goes well with egg? Bacon. Piece of toast. Forty-five. Will people stop giving me grief about that now? I've heard of a piece of cake, but a piece of toast, pal, I'm afraid. To be honest, I was trying what to get off it? air quick enough so Mike Warburton didn't sing, so... One hundred. Well, it is Cox first to a finish here. Yeah, they played Monday. It's the final game of the session. Lee defeated Richie 4 2. Opening match of day two. It was the first game on, of course. Fixtures reversed. Revenge for Richie, winning 4 1 with a. Richie Ocar, 101. 92 average. Sixty-nine. Lee Ocar, 56. And then, as Chris Murphy mentioned, at the top of this match, Lee won the tie yesterday. Game shot on the first two. leg. Lee Cox. So he leads in heads to in head to heads this week by two one. Yet yeah. he made Richie favourite. Here's the man they call so Crafty like Cooksy who takes the opener yeah. Yeah, in the space of eighteen. Yeah, the eleven to ten. If you were going to back a horse in this race, well, that was the one you would have backed. Just be because Richie has in a game of this magnitude. Four to six is just too short a price. But it's one that you just felt before the off, maybe just stay away from. Oh, absolutely. 60. Bit like Shishkin. Did that run today? It did run, and it lost a lot of people a lot of money. Was it favourite? Beyond favourite. Oh, wow. 
Where did it finish? Or is it still running? <laughs> Probably still running. I actually do have a Cheltenham joke. Go on then, mate. Fire away. Let's see if you can actually make me laugh. <laughs> 100. On purpose, rather than... <laughs> I've got pressure now, I'm in. A horse walks into a bar. Oh, crikey. I was backing it in the 2.30. 43. Tumbleweed everywhere. Forty-five. Charlie just did a funnier one than you on the back of that. <laughs> yeah, he backed it twenty to one, and it came in at twenty past four. That's quite funny. One hundred and forty. Trust me, I Charlie I has some. I don't think Russell Brand's quaking in his mm. shoes, mate. No. I think I'll stick to darts commentary, and that's what I'm going to do now, because Richie, Richie Howson Howson requires 118 for the second leg. It would be for the second consecutive hold of throw in this matchup between the pair that came down from Group A. Double 19. Game shot Beautiful the finish. Leg. Got your number. Richie Howson. Yeah, we're seeing some rarely hit doubles tonight. Double 17's been hit. Three times, double 19 has been hit twice. Who is your favourite comedian? 140. Please don't say someone lame. I'm a fan of Jimmy Carr. Oh, good. <laughs> Sound like him most of the time. <laughs> 82. Frankie Boy, you can't not like Frankie Boyle. Love Frankie Boyle. Forty. It's like a bit of the old mop the week back in its pomp. Yeah, before the non critical thinkers took over the world. Fifty nine. Those people out of this. Insatiable appetite to be offended on other people's behalfs. I'm offended by the fact that you're offended by people who are offended by people who are offended. Exactly that. 100. I have to say, I'm my, my favourite to, to watch and listen to is Ricky Gervais. I just think he's a genius. Absolute genius. 96. I actually often listen to, during lockdown, they did a thing with Pilkington, didn't they? It was a, a radio thing, and it's just absolute genius. 140, with your car 85. Will this be a bit of genius? 83 left. Gonna go three seventeens. Yes, Carl Pilkington, Stephen Merchant, and Ricky Gervais. And it is top stuff. Ooh, cancel that. A 32 for a 40. third consecutive well, hold of throw. And those on throws so far have been Game fairly dominant, the haven't they? Recox. It's a 16 darter from me to hold throw. This is panning out why we... Four flag, Richie to throw first. Game on. Those were struggling to pick a winner here. One hundred. And this is really the dictionary definition of these two players this week. We're just seeing consistency, especially on the throw. Ninety-five. Victor of this game will move on to six points. They will temporarily move into a league of their own.
And they will do for a couple of games because Johnny Haynes will not be playing in the next one. It's Davis against Fitton after this. Whoa, and then House and Haynes and Fitton against Cox will finish the night's action off. Yeah, we're back bright, bright and early in the morning, 9.30 a.m. There's the 180 going to be one and like buses. We had to wait to the fourth leg for one and nearly got back to back. Yeah, with the conclusion of Group one C. One and forty. Really hot, con hotly contested group with Matt Clark, the overnight leader, winning five out of five. Oh. One hundred and twenty-nine. Leoka eighty-six. Not sure if Paul called the one six one or not. Oh, this could be costly. Game oh shot dear. on the fourth leg. Lee Cox. An eleven darter from Lee Cox. It can happen. Mm -hmm. But you've you Fifth need to know what you've got. First. Game on. You know, I, I, you, it's a huge monitor on the left, but it's got what score you've got left, and he couldn't have confused it with the other side because, of course, Lee was on 86. And 140. The penny dropped with the last start, didn't it? The two trouble 20s went in, and then he stepped well, back, almost as if he was setting up without a finish. Well, you, you've, always, you've always got to be aware of what you're on. It, it's for one, to never leave yourself a bogey, so you, you've got to know you're on. One six one. I just, yeah, it's, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, isn't it? Forty-five. And as for Lee Cox, all he can do is his job, but that's exactly what he did. That taking out the eighty-six, Lee three-one. As Roy Keane would say, that's 60. his job. No, I'm not doing the accent. You know, even it's, it is St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Surely you could. Well, today it's. 60. Which is exactly day. the reason why I won't do it. Yeah, someone might get offended of you doing an impersonation. I'm sure there's somebody out there that would be. You can guarantee they wouldn't be Irish. <laughs> Probably Charlie. 125. Yeah, Richie Harrison. Not a happy figure right now. 125. There's been a good performance from Lee Cox so far. Three out of five on the doubles. Averaging into the 90s. 140. Leo Carr, 131. Good response. Cox on 131. 39 for 32. 18 for tops. 91, Richie Wakar, 100. Well, the last time Richie Housen was here at the Super Series, this 116 became the trademark finish of his own. And he may need it now to save the match. It's a Hail Mary effort. It's in the triple. And so it's one dollar, double Richie. 18 to try Richie and save the match. Buckled the wire, didn't it? Tops for Cox. Tens. Double five. 35. Richie McCarthy. 36. Well, Richie Housen has the opportunity to right the wrongs here. Double nine. Big dart incoming. 27. Leo Carr, five. And then it's five. Going to see Lee Cox get to leg four. Straight for the double one. No messing about. They head straight for the madhouse, but into the other Richie side. Nine. Two fours. And is Game this game destined for Richie a seventh Hansen. and deciding leg? Well, I lost count how many darts or match darts. Six Lee Cox has had the there. Game on. It's multiples. Six. Not with the split darts, of course, but 
60. Five, all told. You will be absolutely fuming inside. 100. Just have to control that. For all those missed opportunities, actually, Richie House, who now has the higher average of the two. 140. Averaging 92.57, 87.37 for Lee. 55. 85. Now, how sent the dart seeing the march in this leg? Uh, 140 would have, have Cox handy. Well, 145 would be the worst return in the world. Well, all up in the offing now. Yeah, gets him right back into the leg. Isn't going to put him back out of the leg with a max to leave 36. 140. Going to get it done in the path of the course, five visits. 140. Reach your car, 76. 76 for the par five. Mm. Pressure by Cox, though. Oh, what a super first start that is. 106. Not a bad last start either. 76. For a regulation leg in 15 darts to hold to take us to a decider. No surprise. Seven and final leg leader throw first. Game on. Because if you look at the pattern of play in terms of matches tonight, well, apart from the game between Davis and Housen, everything has had at least six legs or more. We wouldn't have it any other way. Still have... 140. Three more matches to bring you after this one. We might as well just stay here, haven't we? 100. Shall we have an all-nighter? Might as well just pull an all-nighter. <laughs> Game nine would be interesting tomorrow if we did that, mind. I thought we might have had a relatively 60. quick group this evening. I planned to maybe have a little glass of vino when I got back to the house, but that won't be happening now. 100. Save it for Saturday night. Oh, pop world, I don't know. <laughs> and a German Donner. They open at that time. 125. I don't, I don't know. think they no. are. No. They're not but... dirty and greasy, are they? Not that we're short 100. of options around this particular area. And Lee Cox here, first to finish, leaving the Nelson. But what can Housen leave in response? Oh, he's going to set this up perfectly, isn't he? 136 for your car. Got to go, Lee. 135. Tops of the whim. 91. Richie O'Connor, 40. To seal the deal, but that wonderful 136 approach on the back of a, a leg that's had 140 in it, as well as a 125 and a 136. He's earned the right here. One left. Wow. Game what shot a dart that Richie is. Housen. For Richie Housen. Yeah, a shake of the head from Lee Cox. He had six match darts in that one but it is Richie Housen who tops the table on six points so coming up after a very very short break will be David Davis against Daryl Fitton
Welcome back. Three darting duels still to take place tonight. And the first of them is a big one for the two players involved. Both Daryl Fitton and David Davis are yet to pick up a point in Group B, though Fitton has only played two of his four fixtures so far. This is the last outing of the night for Davis, who is looking to ensure that all is not lost going into the second day of play tomorrow. Something's got to give, so let's get the game going, as called by Henry Deacon and Chris Mason. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, heading towards the final furlong of a frantic Thursday of darting action here at the Modus Super Series. It's been a frantic Thursday in darts altogether. And whilst you have the opportunity, whilst you have a Welshman on the hockey, to say congratulations to Going Price for winning the latest Premier League night. That's his second win of the season in the Premier League tournament format. But who's going to be the victor in this particular tournament format, Chris Mason? Well, it was a Welshman versus an Englishman in that final tonight where he just got the better of Chris Doby 6-4. And it's a Welshman versus an Englishman here. Both from up north. Northeast, of course. Chris Doby. Northwest. Darrell Fitton. Yeah, very much a big Stockport County fan. Him and Tony O'Shea, season ticket holders over at AC Park. If you know when one of them first two are down, that you'll be first. completely in tune with what yeah. ha what is happening in their fortunes. Didn't they get a few quid? Yeah, they got, a, a, bit they got a rich owner, yeah. Well, it's not done Wrexham too bad, is it? And Absolutely they, not. Those, those two just sold a company they created 1.1 billion pounds so not going to be short of throwing a few more quid 40 into the Wrexham coffers they actually had a good result at the weekend did Stockport County they got the bit of Colchester United by goal to nil oh wonderful stuff 1-0 25 isn't isn't Owen a Colchester United fan. He's call you away, isn't it? Although, to be fair, apparently the person behind him actually gets in for free every single week because they can actually sneak in from underneath his big shoes. <laughs> 100. What? The bookies couldn't decide here. They went 10 to 11, David. 4 to 5, Daryl. They're not taking any risks. 59. And again, like the last one, very tough to pick a winner here. We've seen flashes from the Dazzler tonight. Well, I did the Greyhound yeah, Racing so. Show cross earlier on this evening, and... In terms of tips, I just I just left the match betting alone. I just went into other markets because you just you look at this group and it's just what what was your they're stinkers in terms of trying to price them apart. So my one hundred and thirty five Henry highlights Richie House v Johnny Haynes over two and a half one eighties at seven to four. Johnny Haynes v David Davis Haynes minus one and a half legs at evens. Dow fitting to get the most one eighties at Johnny Haynes at seven to four. Well, uh, Wise Lee Cox to get the better of Dal Fitton at 10 to 11. And how have they done? This is where I go back to my crib sheet. 60. David Ducar, 140. Fitton won one in 180s with Haynes, so that hit the post. <clears throat> Came off the bar. Him off the bar, a bit like Paul Star. 100. Dalio Car, 149. 149 for Fitton. 57. Leaves 32. Ooh. 133. David Car, 40. Twenty. Dollar Car sixteen. 
Two eights are fitting. Yeah, it was a fine final dark treble to leave this double eight. Just enough to put a bit of doubt in Davis. No score. David Ducar, 20. Two tens. For the man who shares his name with the former Brexit minister. Well, Green there is no the problems line. at David number Davis. 10. A strong and stable start for David Davis. Something like Daryl to throw first. Of Game course, that Davison with Dickie Davis. Mm, legend he was. And uh, yeah, of his uh, past, we've lost some legends of sports broadcasting recently. John Motson recently departing us. And Darts has unfortunately had its fair share over the last year or so. We lost the great Nigel Pearson, John Gwynn, who is forever going to be synonymous as. One of the great voices of this sport. Um, a lot of other sports, football, cricket as well, of course. Interesting. Dave Lanning, 39. of course, was a massive speedway commentator back in the day. Lived down in Bournemouth as a Huge pool pirates, I believe they're called. Pool pirates fan. Been like our good mate Scotty Mitchell. Yes. Yeah, he's a massive Speedway fan, isn't he? Oh, he loves it. He's actually, he was telling me that he was actually helping setting up like the pool Speedway services, like in terms of the streaming during lockdown and things like oh, that. Wow. So they've got like a, it's like camera set up where they have one camera which goes around the track and they've got this other camera which is fixed to the start and finishing line and Scott does a bit of commentary for them every every now and then. Oh, how cool. Didn't know that. Great addition to the broadcast team here at the Super Series. 100. Oh, that is, isn't that tomorrow's tungsten teaser? Possibly. Naming the 16 commentators we've had so far. 100. Daryl Carl, 144. There's absolutely one that people just will not get. They won't remember. If they get this answer, they need to get fresh air. And it, and it was my fault. 84. I'd overindulged on my famous Sunday fun day. And forgot to set the alarm. I can attest what those days are like as Davis Green goes for double four to double his lead Davis. to 2-0. Yeah, much better leg there. 14 dart break a throw and Daryl Fitton here in a in a world of trouble. Third leg David to throw first. Game on. Someone's O's gotta go here, and it's an O in a negative sense. One hundred. Chiaosen's O hasn't gone yet. He's three from three. These two. Well, fitting none from two. And this is David Davis's final game, of course. 125. As our good friend and colleague, Chris Murphy, would call it the Battle of the Cellar Dwellers. Like it. One of the The basement. He will like Battle. that too. Davis is the one who's kicked on from that first leg, immeasurably so as well. Yeah, I mean, his average now is a, approaching 90 after that max. And climbing. 180! Shackles are off. He's relaxing. He's playing with freedom. Yeah, it looks to me when he's just a, just a little bit quicker, he looks a, just a little bit more dynamic. Well, they're flying in now. 180. David Ducar, 41. They like London buses. Oh, for another 11 darter tonight. 
one. Donald Ilkar, 103. Darrell's averaging 88.27. He finds himself 2-0 down. 51 for 32. Oh, no one here. 39. David Ilkar, 40. A 3-0. Game shot on the third there we go. Line. This Jimmy is a really Davis. good performance from David Davis. The best stuff that we've seen from him this evening. He's inclined his averages at the evening's gone on. Started with a pair of 80s, then moved up to 86.05 in that defeat to Johnny Haynes, who averaged 95.2. And here in this match, he's averaging 88.41. And that was after a 24 dart hold in leg one. Mm -hmm. Which is down in the 60s. Ninety-five. Two more games following this one. Alison V. Haynes and then Fitton will be back to take on Lee Cox. Forty-six. The darting fun never ends. Seventy-seven. Glad I ordered a double shot of coffee. 85. I don't have a very good tolerance to caffeine, so I'd, I'd have eight? to avoid Eight. that at all costs, apart from first thing in the morning. If I had a cup of tea at night, I'd be literally awake all night. 44. One hundred and forty. So many signs from Daryl that there's st still a game there, isn't there? He's just harnessing it, and that's probably more from the fact that he isn't playing regular competition play. Daryl he kind of uses this years. as his basis to get ready for the World Seniors events, which is where he's laying his hat in terms of competitive darts these days as he goes for double 18. And now across for double 9. He may think about this with 16. Davis on 202, but decides to attack the finish. Yeah, he just had a look there, didn't he? Unusual to see the 42-36, because One if you hit the single 40, 14, of course, you've got, to, you've got to find another treble. Or if you go the 54 route, it's single 18 and 20 and tops. He does split it. Sixteen. Well, David, David Davis 62. has an opportunity here to win this one full zip. Twelve and tops. Forty-two. Fitton is back for the madhouse for three one. Which is quite apt when he walks onto madness is one step beyond. And it's one way. leg Double on Fitton. the board. Madhouse for the madness man. In fact, David yep. is still first. Game on. David won't be too frustrated because he does have the darts here. 4 0 win, of course, would have 82. taken a chunk out of the. Minus six in terms of his leg difference. Ninety-seven. I like that play. One for the nineteen puts a two on the end, and the, the combination of a ton and one forty doesn't leave you a finish, of course. Sixty. One hundred. One 
140. We're going to see another max from Fitton. 85. 85. Identical parity in the score left. But it's 3-1 to Davis, and he's just, just trying to compose. Eighty one needs the teller. Forty years ago now. Staggering, isn't it? One hundred and nineteen. David Carr, one hundred and thirty eight. Oh, double nine for another big finish. Green and in it goes, and David, David Davis, Davis does wrap it up 4-1 with an average of 88.75. That's his PB for the night, and that's him done for the night. We've got two matches to bring you, and it is Richie Hausen against Johnny Haynes. They're up next. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
And we would love you to join us here on Saturday night for our big birthday bash in Portsmouth. Finals night tickets available for free via dartshop.tv. And now, a pair of players who are hoping to be there, certainly in contention. Richie House and looking to complete the perfect night, though Johnny Haynes could pull level at the top of the table if he can inflict the first defeat of the evening on House. And so, over to our commentary team, the thoroughbred Chris Mason and my little pony, Henry Deacon. <laughs> Could have called him a donkey. My little pony, I like it. More modus memories. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I send the complaint to HR? <laughs> this waste paper basket right next to me. I tell you what, put it, put all your thoughts, collect all your thoughts, <laughs> and put it in a bin. Put it in any bin, and it will somehow find its way towards me. All right, our penultimate game of the session. Richie Housen on six points plus five. Johnny Haynes. Four points plus two. So an opportunity for Richie Housen to put one foot in yet another Just like it's Richie the finals first. night. We're already waiting there. Is Robert Thornton, the winner of Group A. We'll have, it'll be the top three from this group, joining Robert Thornton and the top two from Group C, which will give our six-player field for the finals. 43. Split into two groups of three. They play each other once, and the top two will make up our semi-finals. That's the seven throughout the course of the week, Six including eight. the final. Where it'll be the only game of the week, the final, where we have a bull-off. If you're wondering how the throws dictated here at the Super Series, it's the player on the left-hand side who 100. gets the advantage of throw. And what will happen as the week goes on, it'll equal its way out so the players who had the throw tonight for example in group b will be against the darts tomorrow has it decided on a wednesday in group a so i believe that there is an automated computer system which puts all the players in it's all it's, it's technology way beyond my capabilities and knowing but basically with 15 games, one player may have more throws and just the one more, but it's it's designed in a way that the computer program will make sure it's as fair as possible for all of the players. So there's a there's a certain pattern and system in which it's done, and that's how the Wednesday fixtures are amalgamated. Good knowledge. I need to go out more. 97. <clears throat> Forty one. Richie O'Carr, one hundred and sixty four. So one six four for Housen for the first leg. Wild first one. The cover as well. Eighty. Forty one. Yeah, as I said, a win here for Housen puts him on to eight points. Ninety seven. Richie O'Carr, usually... eighty four. More often than not, enough already. We've seen Clark go through the card today, didn't we? Five out of five in Group C. Are we going to see Richie Housen? 78. Go through the card tonight Johnny O'Carr, 118. Well, freeze, be of a glee for Richie Housen. We've seen some random doubles tonight. Double one, double 19, double 17. Game shot on the first leg. Richie Houser. Squeezes it in. And you can see, because of the angle of entry of those darts, if that had been one of the regular type angles of entry, he probably wouldn't have better Second see like the Johnny double. Second first. Game on. Well, it wasn't a vintage leg, but it's one in Housen's leisure, nonetheless. Yeah, it's all about just getting it done here. 
for Richie. It takes massive pressure off going in to tomorrow night. One hundred. I'm going to give you a bit of a treat, Mace. <laughs> You're going to go on the sick tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the treat. A maximum for Hayes. Now I'm going to give you a, a late night tungsten teaser. Ooh, go on then, yeah. So, how many. So, if you put Charlie Corsafine's last name, Corsafine. If you put that on a Scrabble board, how many points would you get for it? So, how many points would you get for Corsafine on a Scrabble board? 26. How about is it, is it on a treble word score or is it just normal? One hundred thirty-nine. Eighteen. See how often I play Scrabble. Ninety. See if I've never ever played it. Have you not? Never played it before. I know all that university education. Don't play it with Kirk. <laughs> Letters, numbers, uh, trains, no. <laughs> no. 42. Johnny O'Carr, 145. 145 for Haynes. He's got six on here. 85. That answer is a bit ambiguous because it could be on a. You could have had the T on a double letter and it'd be on a triple word score or something like that. 140. Not that you would Can have you enough tiles 60? for Scrabble anyway. I think you're going to get seven, don't you? 50. Richie will class 78. 78 for Housen. I always thought it was a, a French name, Costaphine, but Scottish, isn't it? Game shot on the second leg. Richie Hansen Hansen. doubles his lead to 2 0. 17 dart leg there. Apparently, it's a place just outside of Edinburgh. I've been reliably informed. Third leg, Richie, the throw first. Game on. By Charlie himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on talk back. <clears throat> In fairness, I actually saw an anagram of Charlie's last name, but I actually 97. thinking about it, it was just alphabet soup. One hundred. Did you have that spaghetti on a piece of toast? <laughs> I feel like I am on toast at the minute. Sixty. I thought that was breakfast tomorrow. I bet. I bet Mummy does you that, doesn't she? <laughs> and she spells your little name on there, <laughs> on the side of the plate. One hundred. Alphabet spaghetti. <laughs> One hundred. Um, um, when are we going to meet the parents? Anyway, you're not going to bring them on a Saturday night for us all to meet, or do they not approve 100. of what you do? You haven't told them yet. She's wondering why I'm out till about two o'clock in the morning most days. Sixty. I might, I might treat them. You should. I'll just say I've got them the free VIP package. <laughs> get them a, 100. Get them a couple of tokens. Maybe a piece of toast as well. Right, back to the serious business because Haynes requires 101 after 12 against the darts to bring it back to 2-1. 55. Johnny O'Carr, 101. Tops. Game shot Tops on the third gets. leg. Johnny Haynes. One thing we have had a, a lot of tonight is 
Tom plus out. Four fake Johnny to throw first. Game one. Right, that was the seventh. Plus out. 134. We had a 140 and a 121 from David Davis. We had that wonderful 137 from Daryl Fitton. A 118 from Richie Housen. A 141 from Johnny Haynes. And a 138 from David Davis. Well, it was around about this time last week where Connor Heenahan struck perfection at the Super Series. Will it be the hour of the owl at the Super Series? He sparked into life late at night. And he was five darts into the perfect leg. Not quite full star level, is it? 121. This has been an excellent leg from both. 137. Johnny O'Carr, 146. It's got to go, and this is just a safe throw. And across for the 18s, and so Richie Housen's going to go Motown. Johnny O'Carr, 44. Uh, well, he's been going 12 double 16, hasn't he, of late? Everything is leading to the. Double down here, Richie and that's why flag. Richie Housen. that was an 11 darter to break straight back. Mind it, one more game for the conclusion game. of this one. Sees Dal Fitton in action against Lee Cox. It's looking likely that Richie Housen is going to make it four out of four. So, Lee Cox will have an opportunity to close the gap. He can move one four four points to six points. He'll be looking at maybe one, maybe two wins tomorrow. We'll see him in two finals night. He really is starting to unfold and... 95! We're going to have... A cracking lineup for Saturday night. One hundred. Fifty nine. Important will that win be for David Davis a little earlier because he's kept himself in the mix. 95. He can win three from four tomorrow. Yeah, we'll have every chance. He gets under eight points. He'll give himself every opportunity, but it's got to be a tightly squeezed, tightly compact group B. 100. Tunnel Duver Housen here with Haynes not on a finish. One hundred. Richie your car. One hundred and seven. Another one hundred and one from Haynes. Can Housen take out the one hundred and seven to wrap it up for one? Not now. That's why the starting point on one hundred and seven is trouble nineteen. Either side still leaves you options. Seventy-five. Johnny your car. Sixty-six. Tops. 26. Richie Wakar, 32. Double 16 for Housen for the match. For a perfect night in Group B. One left. 
Game shot and in it mark. goes, Richie and Richie Houghton is top of the table following the first night's play here in Group B. No matter what happens in our final game of the evening session, he is perfect on Thursday night. An 86.93 average, sealing a 4-1 success against Johnny Haynes, who has lost twice tonight with an average in excess of 90. So... One more game for us to go here on Thursday night at the Super Series. It sees Dowell Fitton in action against Lee Cox. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series for the final game of the opening night of Group B and a chance for Lee Cox to close the gap on the league leader Richie Houghton who's won all his matches on night one and looks set to take part in Saturday's session alongside Robert Thornton and Manny Met in the final of the World Seniors Darts Championship. Daryl Fitton reached the quarterfinals of that event but is yet to get off the mark tonight so looking to avoid leaving this evening without any points and avoiding well a little bit like Henry's late night horse joke earlier on a nightmare back to Henry and Chris Mason. Our final match of the session and we will be back well, in about eight hours for the conclusion of Group C. Well, we will find out who's going to join Robert Thornton. We'll, we'll certainly find out two of them. I think it's safe to say that, <coughs> barring an almighty collapse or his arm falling off, Richie Housen will be 
in that final Saturday night, duking it out for the five grand. And the place, of course, in Champions Week, where the winner takes away a very, very nice £20,000. Would you say Matt Clark is pretty much there, maybe a win or two and he's in? Yeah. Yeah. And, first leg and he straddled it through first. Really good nick, didn't he? he Game on. He faded a bit in the in the last match, but that's a bit of fatigue. And it looked like he got something in his eye, didn't it? Yeah, he was he was telling me about that. I had a chat with him after the session. Just something was getting in there and he just any other part of the body, like a ball or anything like that, you can pop 14. it. But obviously in the eye, it's just so awkward. And, uh, yeah, he was having a couple of problems. That was why when you saw him at visits today, playing without the glasses on, it was just too much of a pain bag. He just had to, he just had to go with it. Well, it's a, a must-win game for Darrell, really, this. Not the kind of guy you want to be playing in that situation that Lee Cox is in. On two of his three matches. One of the only two. Ten to eleven here. Carol four to five. That's quite appealing. Especially on reflection of the Two players 96. for him. I mean, there has been signs from Darrell. And he has produced some, some good moments. 114. Is Darrell the type of player you think maybe would be better benefited if he could have a group pay campaign? Yeah, I would think so. Just that extra bit of time to settle in. Oh, that's beautiful. There was a 180 in the leg. 71. That's a 171. And Darrell to leave double eight. Oh, here we go. This will hurt. 82. Well, Darrell was fine. That'll be Line wasn't. 16. Two eights. Get it done in the par five. No score. Will you require 39? 216s for an opening leg break of throw. 31. Double trouble for both. 16. Both, miss both missing. Three darts at a double to win the opening leg. Game shot on the first leg. Well, that second dart was such a succulent guy. The third was always going to find its way into the back of the net. That was double four. Yeah, he just nudged off of it, didn't he? Second leg lead to throw first. Game on. The way that his dart is designed, he's got those big bulbous barrels, hasn't he? Anything 100. to the right side of the board that is the other side of the wire is fine. But as you saw in the previous video on the double eight, that's when it can be a little bit of a hindrance. You know, he's always been a great double A teens man in his career. 121. One of the game's great scorers. Yeah, well, he's been... had a couple of TV nine darches, hasn't he? I remember he one won a car eight. for one of them, as did Tony. Actually, yeah. second max in consecutive legs. Nowadays, nine darts are so frequent. The only car you win is one of those little toy ones. You know the old, you know the little toys you get with your Happy Meal. That's what you had for dinner today, wasn't it? One hundred. Oh no! I'll tell you about my dinner in the next leg. One hundred and thirty five, Leo Carl, one hundred and twenty one. One, two, one.
The ball. 76. Well, Dalio Carl, 111. Had at the button and been nowhere near. Trouble 17 for tops. Not going to be an I-I-I moment for Daryl Fitton, but leaves it handy. Leo Carr, 45. Tops for Cox. Game shot on the second Never want a pace. Third leg down on the third first. Game on. One hundred. Stunning averages after a couple of legs in. One hundred and forty. It's not bad for the last game of the night, is it? Sixty-five. Tidy from Fitton, isn't it? I say we've seen spells from him, but they've just not been long enough spells. One hundred. Super last start. Crafty Coxie. It's downstairs. There was no room really there seven. for Fitton to even look or see. Could treble 20. Eighty-five. Well, Saturday we're going to have our little bit of a birthday do at the Super Series. We're going to be looking back at some memorable moments. Any VTs or videos you're looking forward to seeing? I say, looking at your face, thinking, oh, no. 95. Donald the car, 105. There's just been so many, but th this one that stands out for me, because it's such a, a wonderful story. Oh, needed the treble to get a go at double 18. And let's just watch this go in. Will your car, 81. 12 ball. 13. Bonus. 55. Donald Ocar, 52. Double eight. Game shot on the third leg. Donald Fitton. 17. Dart of a dart. Yeah, the story of Cam Crack Cab Tree. Cab <laughs> See how it's late at night. Don't worry, mate. Yeah, you know what I'm on about anyway. Um, that guy. <laughs> yeah, a, a guy that was playing online during that that period where everybody were, was playing remotely, averaging sort of fifty odd and sixty odd, and just got better and better and better. And I'm sure, a lot of people thought, "Well, it's not real." And, and then he started hitting some real big numbers online. Turns up here on debut and produces a, an average of one hundred and fifteen point six two. And I just think it's a just, a, just a, one of the very few positives to come out of that time. 83. He's, he's doing very well at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, doing really, really well indeed. In Hildesheim for the Challenge Tour, where a number of our players who participate in this tournament are. I said John Henderson, Andy Jenkins will be taking part in that. 140. Owen Bates, and he's also going to be getting a Pro Tour call-up as well. Yeah, nice long 83. weekend for him. Playing four Challenge Tour events, straight into two Pro Tours. And, of course, on the Tuesday, there's a double header, header of Euro Tour qualifiers. One of the eighty. But now takes his average up to 100. In excess of a ton, 101.3.
is for an 11 dart it. for tops. 41. Lee Yuka, 135. Lee. Take out the 135. Ball. Trouble 20. That's where they go this way. Leaves the ball. Game oh, from the fourth leg. Lee how ball. about that? Wow. What a finish under serious pressure there. He was in danger of going 3-1 down. Fifth leg, Darrell did through first. Game on. Nice moment there from Darrell. A little fist pump in appreciation. Really quality finish, and he had to move a long way left. Because the way that first dart sat in the board, he wouldn't have had the greatest view in the world, which is why he had to move to the left, almost close to where our camera to the side of the board is occupied. Yeah, it didn't One it really look like it had gone across but maybe it was the flight that was blocking the, the line into the bullseye but a wonderful dart that one uh, 60. be on the highlight reels on our socials that is a hashtag modus memory Sixty. Yeah, do treat us in with your modus memories. We'll, on Saturday night, be doing some special features to celebrate the two-year anniversary of the Super Series. Does that turn the screw in this leg? Yeah, that's his third of the match. We've had a 180 and a 171 from Darrell as well. Fifty nine. Leave a car one hundred and twenty one. From an eighteen, leaves thirty two. Eighty nine. Dollar the car one hundred and sixty one. So Cox returns the thirty two for a three two lead. 65, Leo Carr, 32. 32 for 3 2. And it's a break. Game shot on the fifth leg, Lee Cox. Well, the average for Lee Cox. Very, very impressive as we start leg six, 101.55. Game on. A couple of ton plus averages this week, including a Super Series. PB of 103.66. That was on Monday, wasn't it? 140. Backed it up on Tuesday with a, another ton pluser. As he mentioned earlier on tonight, he's just adding a level 95. to his game. And I think, should he get through to Saturday night, I think he's going to be a real preeminent danger. Yeah, of sustained quality this week is the, the best I've, I've seen Lee play. And the numbers speak for itself. As you say, record averages, the checkout ratios have been fairly good by and large as well. 180! Well, Darrell Fitton won't be rolling over and having his belly tickled. As he pops in his second 180. 140. Now, the Super Series is a tummy tickling free zone. And on that note, Mace departs. 85. Leo Carr, 161. 161. He's not going to go on this occasion. 60. Dalla Lucar, 141. Could this be inspired? Starts downstairs to work his way up. He's going the Getty Price route. Or oh, he's going across for triple 16. 
133. Left himself on double four. Should he get a go? Because Cox here is going to get one dart at tops. 81. By 4 2 double win. It comes and it goes. And so Fitton returns for the double four to send us the distance in our final game of the session. Game shot on the six leg. Daniel Fitton. And we go all the way. In our final match of the session, a leg with significance, a leg with importance, because so final if Daryl Fitton wins first, this yeah. leg overnight, you'll have Cox on four, Haynes on four, Davies on two, Fitton on two. It would mean Richie Housen is out clear at the top of the table. A superb start from the Dazzler in this deciding leg. But here comes Cox. 140. Ninety six. One hundred and thirty four. Tom forty one three four. Excellent beginning to this pivotal deciding leg. Minder back nine thirty in the morning. For the conclusion 58. of Group C here at the Super Series. The whole team, the whole gang 85. will be back for that tomorrow morning. Looking forward to it. And don't forget, you can be here every Saturday night. Tickets available via dartshop.tv. 174. That's an excellent we setup. 142. From Fitton, at least. It's up 39 after 12. Cox here for the match. That's 142. Double car 39. This is for the match. And this is to really conjoin this Group B. Two darts. A double 16 for the Dazzler. Game shot on the map. And Group B is going to have a grandstand finish on Friday because Daryl Fitton <coughs> has beaten Lee Cox despite an average of 102.03. Have a look at them averages. 97 for Fitton got him over the line. Cox 102.03. That's the tail of the tape in Group B. It is so tight, so congested. But it is Richie Housen who is the man out on top. Eight points to his name after four matches. Let's head up to the balcony and get some final thoughts and reflections. Chris Mason. Is it Chris Murphy? Yeah, I think the, the question is, where did that come from? <laughs> they saved the best to last, didn't they? Yeah, game of the day. Uh, no question for me. And uh, 102 average for Lee Cox. And, and normally when you see 100 plus averages, it's a winning average, not so against Daryl there. Yeah, we'll take a look at the final league table. As Henry mentioned, Richie Housen is out clear at the top of it. He's won all of his matches on opening night, and I think we can put him in in marker pen, can't we, to finals night? Yeah, we can highlight that name. I think he's, yeah, eight, eight points is usually more than enough to, to get you through, but what it has done is, is bunch up the rest of the field, and it's going to make it rather interesting tomorrow night because that win... Daryl Fitton still very much in the mix. Same goes for David Davis as well. When he beat Fitton, very good performance as well from him. Both of those players probably needed to win their last match tonight and did. Yeah, and, and we've seen enough from both of them tonight to, to know that there's, there's a high-level game in there because at moments they both produced some absolutely magic darts, but uh, ultimately they didn't convert into points. Well, they'll all play again tomorrow at 10 p.m., once again, Friday evening for the conclusion of Group B. Group C gets back underway 9.30 a.m. on Friday. But for tonight here at the Super Series, that's a wrap, or as Henry would say, a piece of toast.